I can't believe it. The finale for SEMA 2021 is here. Man, all week long, we have seen all different kinds of vehicles, SUVs, trucks, sports cars, low riders, off-road vehicles, everything else in between. And the fun's not over yet. In fact, it's just beginning. For the next few hours, it's all about the SEMA cruise where the vehicles are leaving the convention center and heading down the strip. I hope you enjoy. We're waiting for those cars to come up right now. Hey, Jim, yo, who's the short guy next to you? Is that my man, Jim? That's Jim McElveen, and we're going to talk to him. He uh, does a lot of work with Optima. Jim, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for coming. Hey, tell us about the Optima Ultimate Streetcar Challenge and where we're at this year. It's the 14th time we're doing this, and these cars that you're seeing right here, Brian Hobos Camaro was in Fast 6, and he won the OCI in 2013. The next car, Jason Bottenfield's Camaro, you can buy the die-cast version of that at Summit Racing. He won the Classic Car Liquidators GTV Regular Season Championship. And then the car behind that is Jonathan Levin's 2008 Shelby GT500. That car has won the GT regular season championship for years in a row. That is outstanding, man. And uh, originally, the uh, the SEMA cruise kind of started by the after the cars take off and want. And we were like, wow, that's an event. Yeah, it's a pretty cool deal. And now we're tucked back in the bronze lot because they're actually running the uh, peak performance challenge all day. Don't come through the line. Don't just be taking a little bit of a while. Those guys ran in the morning so they can get out early. Yeah, there's a new thing to see all across happening right here. It's a pretty cool deal. I know the competitors are really excited about it, and I think the response from the fans is really good. All right, man. Jim, thank you so much for all your help. And we got... Okay. Everybody put your earplugs on. You see what's coming through here. A Hummer. Sea Cat. Sea -cat. That's why after like five hours of this, I like Man. I love it, man. I can't wait to get a little hit of diesel. Ah, I'm ready. Ah, you know, there's a great video of you standing right there yelling diesel fumes a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah, that went over big with my wife. Hey, so if you're wondering, all these cruise vehicles are going to end up on the west lot. That's where we have that new building. And if you didn't get there for any reason this year, you've got to check it out. Uh, we got West Coast Customs out there. We got a private exhibitor. We got this guy. Who's this guy? There you go. Get him, get him. I'm taking the vintage blue Coleman cooler on the roof of that tunnel. You know, Kevin, what I saw this year was just a wide, wide, wide scope of vehicles. I saw the Scooby Doo van, the you see some outrageous port. There's every stop. Oh, yeah. We got a Ford Duster, and then a Skyline, and then a Porsche, and then a Road Dozer. It's just an awesome festival for your eyes and for your nose. Well, the craziest thing about this show is anything goes. We just saw a C8 Corvette roll by, and of course, uh, our friends at Chevrolet unveiled the C8 Z06, both hardtop and convertible here this year at SEMA. So, every single direction. The cruise will probably run a little bit quicker than it has in the past, largely because of the fact that many of those larger off-road lifted trucks that you typically see come through the cruise, they're already on the west side. So we're going to have a chance to see those vehicles once we adjourn over to Cena Ignited. It's yeah. free, Cena Ignited. Uh, they'll revisit that battle of the builders competition. There's all kinds of cool entertainment, food, so definitely be a part of it. Yeah, it's a very cool Vegas sun has been pretty hot today, but I'm not complaining. Yeah. You know, as part of any perfect, uh, I guess, event is the weather, and it was awesome. I was walking around, it was a little sunny, a little cool, people were having a good time. Do super looking good. What's happening, guys? We got some Mazdas, we've got a 57 Chevy sitting here with some custom trim. It's loaded down, but listen to that one. That is Hellcat power, my friends. A little bit different sound. Sweet shoe box, looking good, man. Love yeah. the paint. That's the hell air, Kev. Yeah. That's right. 41 Williams. Really clean, traditional custom plan, big wheels. The guy driving this Ranger is going to go uh, play in the snow. When he gets home. Hey, did you guys have a good time watching the video off the road? Yeah, Ford Up Front was screaming all week. Tire smoke, 
like this mid 50 Chevy, you know, all the way up to the new stuff. So whenever you see the truck with big wheels and custom suspension, big lift kits, the lighting, the brakes, that's all a great sign that this industry is healthy and that you have options to make your truck however you want, and there's a zillion different ways to do it, all demonstrated here. But right now, we've got a bitchin' little vintage Bronco coming through. Uh, Bronco is big at the show. Uh, Ford was out there uh, offering an opportunity to check out all the different versions of the Bronco. But you know how it is. When you see the old ones, that's all you want to be around. Look how cool these are. Well, that's where it all started, man. And, and uh, in our shop, we did a 5 0 Coyote swap and a, and a 72 Bronco, similar to the one that just went by. And I'll tell you what, you put some power in those, they don't call them a bucking Bronco for nothing, man. Those things get crazy. Well, Kev, you know how I am with some of these exotics, right? I, I know how you are, Joe. All right, so I'm going to be good for a little while. <laughs> well, exotics are definitely part of the show, and it's always great to see them. It doesn't matter who owns them. For sure. Down and dirty, looking good. Great job, brother. How about a nice little round of applause for this clean little Ford pickup? These guys in this big Ram have their uh, Golden Camshaft Award coming out of the bed, ladies and gentlemen. But they also brought out Old Glory. Thank you for that. And that is the great country we live in with the freedom to build cars the way we want. For now, to support that RPM Act, you know. Oh, for sure. I was watching uh, Doug Evans hold forth there. Uh, there's so many ways. I've heard some folks worrying about whether or not uh, we got the device of the internal combustion engine. Well, it's not quite that far, but you guys seem to be hit by some of the uh, laws and some of the, uh, some of the ways folks are trying to keep us away from our hot lines. We'll unite. We'll keep ourselves tight. But get involved. Check it out. All on SEMA.org. Uh, for more information about the show, maybe as you get back home, you can always check out SEMAshow.com. Check her out. Uh, Bully Dog Kim. Yeah. Another big, big name here. And I was getting the <laughs> All right. I was getting a flashback when I saw the Jeep with the Beltec logo. Bring me back to the sport truck days and that Slam oh, yeah. sport truck market. Uh, that's been hot. That's been really, really hot, the, the Slam pickup truck market. Well, and has the Overlander market. And we just saw the Toyota roll by with the uh, overlanding equipment, the tent on the roof and the ladders and all the stuff. So you can go on, you know, go out to uh, Bureau of Land Management man, land all over the country. Tread lightly, bring your stuff in, camp, hike. Do your thing, eat well, and bring all your stuff right back out like you were going over there. And that West Hall, and I'll keep pointing to it, they had an overlander section there. They did. Yeah, and that was a new experience. Uh, this SL Benz, by the way, is insane. A 190 SL. These cars don't get customized very often because A, they're beautiful from the factory, but B, it takes a pretty penny to build one of those, Joe. Getting drafted by a speedster, what we got there, Kev? Oh, heck yeah. Check out the two-tone with the blue interior on there. I want to be you. You don't want to be me, you want to be the guy in the suit. That's who I was pointing at. <laughs> you don't want to be me. <laughs> One-of-a-kind vehicle, folks. You'll see it here at the TV show. That's right, Joe. This car is brought to you by Acme Rev Limiters. Yep, wearing my Forky Auto. Shoes looking good. Um, all right, who are you guys? Diamond Auto Four in Sacramento, California. How was it for you? Amazing. All right, well, keep it going. We'll see you over at Ignited. <laughs> Cars with their own audio 
system and their own AC system. Blowing hair straight out of the top, man. Who is this, Kevin Shakira? I think so. What's up, Shakira? I think it's Shakira Swift. She told her mother she's going to Las Vegas for a wedding. That's it, man. underneath the hood of this car? Uh, second gen squad, Coyote, Rousey, and Charger, put down about 700 dollars. So, you know, there's a lot of Mustang people here. Obviously, Ford's all over the place. What kind of reaction did you get when folks were watching the car and checking it out? Oh, it was great. The best time I've had in this car, yeah. Is it th just your experience of having a good time, or is it kind of watching everybody else enjoy the car, too? That's my favorite part. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody else enjoying the car is my favorite part. What are you working on next? Not sure yet, kind of a secret. I gave you my business card, right? And what's that mean? <laughs> it means next time you don't end up in the West Lot, all right? That's true, but hey, I have a great adventure. Good to be with us. We're going to stop the traffic and let you get back in there. Hey, Big Paul. Yeah. Go down here. It's exciting. What's up? There we go. Lake Hamilton. Stay tuned, my wife. I'll be back in about a week. We're going on a three-hour tour. Come on, Marcus. Come on, baby. Yeah. How's my people up here? Everybody having a good time? Everybody's having a good time up here. How about Hey Joe, check out this bitch in 65 Malibu coming through. 
Pro Touring costume, perfectly gapped, beautiful color. Just an awesome modified muscle car. Is this what you thought you wouldn't see another one of these VWs? VWs clean loose coming. I got Here we go. Oh, that was fun. It's all fun, man. Steve McCribb is 2021, baby. Sweet little Chevelle action up here. Yeah, beautiful car. We're getting to some off-road performance coming your way next. Okay, I'm about two miles out. Two miles? Well, there's a super killer three-door Suburban coming through right now. Big wheels lowered. Super clean interior. Okay, we're packed to the gills up here. Awesome, awesome. Very nice 71 Ranchero. The creativity on these cars and trucks is really, really sweet this year. Here's four guys in the back having a great time in this truck. Give me a little something. There you go. Yeah, and there's an early C10. Big blown Whipple charge motor coming out of the hood, a tag axle in the back, and a big wing, man. That's something you see every day. Kev, I had a really cool gig here at the show this week. Yeah. That was uh, hosting the SEMA Hall of Fame. You're right on, man. This year we uh, inducted Rick Love, our good friend from Vintage Air. Yep. We celebrated Jesse Combs. Yep. We had our data nerd Bob Moore, as well as Carl Schieber, inducted into the SEMA Hall of Fame. And man, you sit down there with Don Perdome and Harry Hibbler and Barry McGuire and Chip Boost. Awesome time. Yeah, you get to hang out with all the cool people, man. Another great another landing vehicle, I guess. It's heating up over there on the west side. Is it? It's going to be an awesome sea big night. You know, okay, let's face it, the crowd was compared to maybe in the past. It may have seemed like there weren't as many people, but I can tell you, all the people that were in that West Hall, were on this side of the street, we wouldn't have missed a beat. Oh, you no. Know, and that's a testament to all you guys who came out here. Again, once we thank you so much for being a part of the show. For thank sure. you so much. All right. A new Bronco. Bronco, how you doing, brother? My wife said, don't touch people. I can't. Yeah. All right. Just how I am, man. I'm with your wife on that one, Joe. I was hugging people. I was giving that mask a beating, though. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> well, so what were the stats here this week? Everybody, uh, you know, likes to count how many people were here, how many exhibitors, how many, how many cars. We should take a random guess. How many people do you think were here this week? All right, let's do that. How many people do you think came to the SEMA show, sir? You. Start, start the bidding at 10,000. We got one guy says 75,000, we got another guy that says 200,000. Guess what? We're somewhere right in the middle, Kip. That's right. Yeah, about 114, 115,000 folks. Okay? That is so awesome. Got considering that international travel is still restricted. So that is US only, basically, in force here at the SEMA Show 2021. Kev, as we run those numbers, how about the exhibitors, the number of manufacturers that were on display here at the show? Any idea how many exhibitors were here? More than I got to see. How many exhibitors? He said 200 exhibitors? There's 200 exhibitors here. How, how did you already play the game, okay? <laughs> how many exhibitors do you think were here at the show? 500? How about you? You got nothing? By the way, this 68 Chevelle rolling oh. is featuring one of those new Tremec TKX 5 oh. transmissions that basically fits in the hole while transmission modification. Very full cool upgrade to your muscle car. Sorry, Kev, I have a trade show professional with me. Go ahead, Paul. I was just saying thanks to SEMA and all of you. This was the largest trade show held in North America since March of 2020 pre-pandemic. Yeah. And you guys were all a part of it. Awesome. That is all right. so great to hear. 
automotive enthusiast came out and, and said, we're going to do this. The heck with all of it, man. All right, man. Pitch and play out. All right, Joe, so we never got our answer in how many exhibitors. Did you get a good guess? How many exhibitors? Yeah, we had uh, the numbers were 114, 1200, 1200, and 1400 cars. Pretty stout little numbers there. That is insane. I see, Mike, you forgot to take your mask off, too. You know you're outside, right? I know. Don't stand too close to him. You want him to keep an eye. I went to bed with, with mine the other night. So have you been over the west side, Jeff Mikey? What's going on there? Uh, we have all the 12 finalists in Battle of the Builders staged over there. Uh, I'm starting to pick up over there. I took the hike a little back. Very cool experience. Uh, they got 730. We'll announce over there. We'll announce the winners again. All right. You know, every year we seem to have a couple of cool bikes roll through here. I think it's just them getting a front row seat of uh, seeing what the SEMA Cruise is all about, seeing the cars, and seeing all the happy people, ladies and gentlemen. So great to see you all here again. Nobody would have thought that you could have flipped the switch and turned this event off like what happened last year. And I'm so glad that switch got flipped back on. And here we are. This is great. Hey, Kevin, I spotted two big shots there. Masquerading is media up there. Yeah, which one? Well, I don't want to name any names, but... <laughs> one guy uh, used to play in the sandbox over here at the CD show for quite a long time. And a lot of what you see here is a result of his efforts. He's my main man, Peter Mack. Yeah. So rolling up right now, folks, is what I'm going to call, like, the ideal weekend on wheels. Got your off-road truck. You got a side by side, you got a killer boat. Okay, if I ever came home with this shit, my wife would kill me. There's a lot of things to do that your wife would kill you. I'm your hands in the I couldn't afford the propeller on the back of that boat. I'll well, just get to know those people real well. Please! Please! Oh, here it goes. I don't know, it's gonna happen. I think you just got it last week. Oh, she's had one before. You can just tell by looking at it. It's not her first car. All right, another big shot celebrity up there. Any of you guys golf here? Any golfers? Me either. I don't know why he's such a damn big shot. <laughs> PGA professional golfer, Mr. Joe Donato in the house. Joe D, right there. We got some more Italian rides coming through, Joe. You're Italian. I am. I get it, Kev. I get it. Yeah. I'm not having a 340 Dustin. That's just me. Alright. How you doing? What time you got to have the car back? Alright, Kev. I'm going to start drinking and start diesel. I don't know what the hell I'm going to be saying in about 20 minutes, so don't hold me to it. You mean you know now? What else? Hey, Kev, you know what I did? I wrote a bunch of notes. Every year I do this. I write on both sides of the paper. I write all over it, and I don't read it ever. Yeah. Well, you know, in a few minutes, we'll just have you start reading that. All right, so I'm going to read it now. Oh, I know what I want to talk about. A beautiful orange seat text. Oh, now this is nice. Oh, he's going too fast. He's going to get him. Get him, get him. Get that guy in the Lamborghini. Ha, ha. Don't leave this guy in the GTO alone. This yeah. is a beautiful car. Oh, but I'll tell you what, let's hear it for our law enforcement officials that are helping us out. Fuck them all. Did you see them? Yeah, yeah. They used to scare the shit out of me when they had those drug sniffing dogs. And they used to have to go back to the room and then come back out. <laughs> well, it was a pretty cool detail to be a, a motor police officer on, on a motorcycle working this. Well, especially at double the rate, watching all these cool cars and seeing all these cool people. That's a pretty nice gig if you can get it. Oh, yeah. All I knew is I could use their help last night and I couldn't find one of them. All right, so you're going to tell us what's on your note right there. All right, so here's what's on my note. Back in 2009, I was saying 2019 earlier, 2009, I asked Peter if he could do a SEMA cruise. It's nice to see all these cool cars leaving the SEMA show. Now, the locals already knew that it was a happening because they put out their lawn chairs and they watch all the cars go back to L.A. or wherever. Again. 
So I was out there uh, letting out the Optima Streetcar Challenge vehicle because they had to leave early. And then as soon as they started up those Optima Streetcar vehicles, people just came around. And as we opened the gate and let them go, people were taking photos and getting excited. And I knew we had a little magic. So did Peter. That next year, we put together the first team of blues. It was me, Peter, and Brian Payne. Where's Brian Payne? Brian's one of the senior sales guys here at SEMA. And we sat on that stage and it rained, right? My luck, it rained. And we had one little speaker and one little stage. And uh, to see what it is now, Kevin? It's the same. Joe, you're, you're basically the second coming of Walt Disney. Nope. Walt Disney had a knack of taking things that were just things and turning them into giant events like this. And, and here's a true example, right? So Disney World, Disneyland in California opened in what, 1955. And the day before this thing opens up, they've got the parking lot, they got the trams going by, they got the rides, everything's pretty much set to go. Walt Disney looks down and he sees some weeds growing that weren't manicured yet, right? Landscaping not quite finished. So what does he do? He looks up the Latin name for each one of those little weeds and hangs a tag on it. And sure enough, that became an attraction, right? Deception's quite an art, Kevin. We have a job to work with here. You just uh, you recognize an opportunity to bring people together and really enjoy all this and not let this event go to waste. So thank you, Joe, Peter, and all you guys who came up with this. Another noise that scares me, Kevin. <laughs> hey, last night, Kevin, I heard pounding, 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 pounding on my door. It wasn't me. Uh, finally got up and let her out. It was, it, was a, nice. it was a tough night. Oh, now this is cool. The kick -ass Sweet. Where have I seen this vehicle? Off-Road Expo. That's where I saw you. Anybody go to the Off-Road Expo this year in Southern California? What an event. Yeah, the one in Ontario. One in Ontario. We'll be back at Pomona next year. How you doing? Looking good. Who are you with? Who's the, you couldn't get a girl to go with you or what? How was the show? That's great. Work on that date thing, okay? All right. You know, Kim, I can't tell the Corvettes from the Ferraris anymore. The Testarossas. Clarence. They all look so cool. Yeah. So if you paint a Tuscarossa a different color, it's still a Tuscarossa. I just remember the red one with that anti-beige interior. I never liked that. I did have a David Kimball cutaway at one, though, Kevin. Oh my gosh, remember the David Kimball cutaways? I do. All the great exotic cars drawn in such a way that you could see right through them. Amazing. One of my favorites was the uh, the anniversary of the Chevrolet small block poster. And they had Zora Arcus Duntoff, and they had the original 283, and the Power Packs, and 327, all the way up to, I believe, the LT1 in the early 90s is when that came out. That was really cool. Ken, looks like one of the Optimus Streetcar vehicles got lost, huh? What do we got coming up? Ah, uh, looks like it. License plate says Vanarchy. Got to love that. We need to change the music to a, a little clown theme song here. The 47 guys in the three-wheeler jump out. But hey, Cam, hold on. Come over, Cam. It's Cam Douglas, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, Cam. From Optima Battery. Well, you're right over here. Cam's kind of our, I don't know, he's our unofficial official master of ceremonies and a grand marshal in my eyes for everything he does. He's one of the biggest supporters of our events. He's an all-around cool guy. Cam, how are you? How was the show for you? Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, so glad we came and, and uh, doubled down this year. It was awesome. Yeah, in the meantime, more of these Optima Challenge cars are coming by. Uh, Kev, we're going to have some of them go by while I pick up some time with the camp. So you're not good for the weekend. You guys are headed out to the racetrack. What do you folks expect this weekend? Yeah, it's uh, We did the speed stop. Tomorrow we do autocross and road race. I'll be on that. Yeah, you've been coming to see the show as long if not a little bit longer. And I follow you on Facebook, unfortunately I'm older than you and I hate when that shit happens. But you know this event longer and been involved in it in such an intimate way. Was there anything different that struck you about this year's show? I saw a lot of good energy. It was great. Um, it, it, it was busy and we had a great time. I, I just think it was a uh, great show. It's an honor to have you with us. Who do you have with us in the car, Kim? My wife, Marie. Marie, thank you for letting us spend so much of your time. We really appreciate it.
How we do, guys? Nice job, Joe. Nice job. All right. They had a huge turnout of Optima Challenge cars this year, so we're going to see them sprinkle through the SEMA Cruz probably most of the evening here tonight. Killer Lowrider, beautiful. Look, ladies and gentlemen, check out the paintwork on this Impala as it rolls by. Insane, in the hot Vegas sun. I absolutely love it. Yeah, there was a couple. I don't know, I saw three or four really nice low riders. Uh, I didn't see my man Joe from Low Rider Magazine. He may have been flying around there. I did see the folks over at Dub, at that Dub Zone, uh, lifted and leveled. All those cool vehicles were out there. Yeah. Did you have a chance to check out the Motor Trend stage, Kim? Uh, I did. I did, as a matter of fact. In fact, uh, my lovely wife, Kelly, did an interview there with uh, Amanda yesterday, and it was uh, very cool. You know, when you see iconic brands like Motor Trend, and Hot Rod, and Four Wheeler, still out there active, promoting our hobby. Uh, great publications, great websites, great events. You can always count on those guys, those iconic brands, you can trust in them, so make sure you support them. Here's an iconic brand, Joe. There's a couple iconic brands out there. Hold on, let's see Followed by a Buick GS, ladies and gentlemen. You don't see those very often done pro touring style, but here's one for you. <laughs> Kevin, did you dodge the banquet like I did last night? No, I think I was there. I'm sure you were there. Kevin's the MC. Well, yeah, myself and Jared. It was a lot of fun last night. Right? Uh, I saw you signing autographs. Next thing you need is an agent, right, Peter? I'm gonna need an agent. That wasn't an autograph, man. That was a bar tab check. <laughs> I did the Irish section about 20 times, and it's still about two grand this trip. You know, one of the cool things about this, sit out, your mother's watching, this autumn motor. Who's this, Pip, Kev? I don't know, man. It's got the Scorpion Tony. Yeah, it's got the Scorpion Tony. I'm sorry, I interrupted you, Kev. It's all right. No, when, when all these styles of cars come together, right, we've got imports from all different countries. We've got the low riders, we've got the trucks, we've got the muscle cars, we've got late model performance. We've got things with three wheels like we just saw, with customs and cruisers like that big Lincoln. And you're all in a place like this, and look, everybody just gets along and digs each other's stuff, right? There's nothing but appreciation for all these cars. And that's, I think, unusual in the world right now because we see everybody sitting on Facebook, you know, somebody posts something and then 900 people argue with them. But as car enthusiasts and truck enthusiasts, we need to hang together and support each other, even if it's not your bag, right? Even if you don't like military-style Jeeps or land cruisers or street rides. If, you, if that's not your thing, you still need to go, hey, you know what, that thing's pretty cool, even though I'm not the guy that built it. Because by getting along, we have a voice, we band it together, and we can fight those that are trying to shut us down, which we definitely don't want. So. It's really cool to see that we can all get along and, and celebrate all these different cars like we do here at Seaman. Hey, how about a nice round of applause for our DJ, DJ Enoch. He's joining yeah. us back again on the crowd there. I tried, I asked him to play Boston, long time. Like, I think he, I don't even know if he was born when that man was around, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Nice uh, retro paint scheme on this new Bronco with the badges and the fade. Looks like uh, a tribute to about 1979. Super, super cool. All right, we're into it. The Seymour Goose. You guys having a good time so far? Having a great time, man. Hey, you know, so many of you that got to be a part of this is kind of cool, but maybe there's somebody back home like uh, that brother in law that you hate or that neighbor down the street who will uh, cut your grass when you're on vacation. They're not here. Or that hot chick down the street that you want to talk to. Buy some SEMA apparel. Uh, grab a hat, grab a t-shirt. Uh, 
Let's get one of these SEMA Cruise shirts. Uh, go see Tim. Now's the time to do it. Uh, they have apparel station here on the corner. Tons of them over on the west side. Um, look, this is the time to do it. This is a rebound year for all of us. and bring back memories time and time and time again. There's so many cool items outside of the apparel. And I was paid to say this, so go over there and buy something from them. Would you please? Hey Joe, so coming up we see this uh, red, white, and blue two door Bronco. First of all, two door Bronco, which is cool, barely see any of those yet. But this one's labeled up because it was a participant in the Rebel Rally, right? The Rebel Rally is an eight day, 1500 mile rally through the desert. You can only navigate with a paper map and a compass, and it's all women competitors. It is so cool. Is it from the Camel Trophy at Red Kevin? I think they, they like compete more to compete and enjoy the, the, the journey along the way. And uh, 52 teams, 104 women out in the desert. They went across three different states. It's just such a great thing. I, I hope someday they make one for men to play because uh, I'd love to do it. Hey, so in addition to Kevin being, um, I don't know, one of our most knowledgeable, professional, Host here at the SEMA show. He also has a uh, really awesome business building hot rods. Ken, what's going on in the shop with you? Wow. Well, you know, it was an interesting year, and, and uh, if you have a, a hot rod business, a muscle car shop, a restoration shop, and a pandemic comes in, and they say the economy is smoked, you start to get nervous. You think, oh my gosh, are we going to be out of business tomorrow? And that's kind of what I thought. But fortunately, we had a great year. Most of these companies here in the automotive performance arena had a great year, and that's really something to say. So today we've got 40 cars in our shop from seven different countries that were building. Cars from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, all the way up into the 80s. Real popular right now are LS conversions and C3 Corvettes, uh, you know, building and modifying Pontiac Trans Ams. Of course, we always have a bunch of Camaros. We've got a really killer 57 Ford two-door wagon we're building with a Ford single overhead cam. John Cozzi built 540, 750 horsepower, dual throttle body fuel injected V8, it's all aluminum. That car actually might be here next year. We'll, we'll have to see. It. Yeah, thanks, Joe. We've got a lot going on. How about the podcast? The uh, podcast is quite fun. We do a, a little podcast called V8 Radio. In fact, our podcast co-host, Mr. Mike Hubal Clark is over here right at the, uh, the curve. Raise your hand, Mike Hubal Clark. He's over there uh, at the judges' table. V8 Radio, if you want to tune into some of our nonsense, we'd love to have you. I broke the record for the most swear words by any interviewer. You did, but we have an editor, so we took care of all that. Hey, Joe, we got some drag week cars coming in here. Oh, see, this is when it gets good, Ken. Oh, yeah. You know what I think drag week? I think um, Rick Johnson from Gear Vendors, who's done so, so much to support not only Drag Week, but the, those events, all the roadkill escapades. Every time we had any event with Hot Rod, where it involved drag racing, Gear Vendors was there. These vehicles not only compete on the track, but they've got to drive to the track the next day, and the next day, and the next day. They can't be trailers. Well, without their gear vendor unit, that event is not possible, because uh, that gear vendor transmission has overdrive gears to make high horsepower cars be treatable, and they handle like 2,000 horsepower, so uh, nobody in the world would have ever thought that a five-second quarter-mile car could drive across country, but now that happens. All right, Kev, i got to check out my man with the green GMC. You know, sometimes I get older, I forget names all the time, but I don't forget names. Brother, tell me, buddy, who you are. My man, Dom? Yeah, Dom Tucci from Tucci Hot Rods in Marcy, New York. What's super cool about this truck is here 22 years ago, and now it's back this year. Nice. It's really cool to see my upstate New York brother coming over here and hitting SEMA hard. You guys had the customized Bronco and the custom Maverick getting a lot of eyeballs at Ford. The work that you've done starting to get around over there at Tucci Hot Rods. How can folks get a hold of you? Uh, you can find us at TuccihotRods.com on Instagram. And uh, yeah, that's about it. This is Dom Tucci. This is the name you're not going to want to forget. He's going to be one of the hot up-and-coming builders, believe me. Dom, thanks for representing Upstate, baby. All right, hold on. We're going to get you back in the boat. Tucci Hot Rods, Upstate New York. That ensures we can only the next year's SEMA show, Joe Donato. For sure. Very cool GTR. 
You know, I, I hope we get the chance to see uh, the new Z that was uh, unveiled. I don't know if Nissan is going to bring that through the uh, cruise or not. Uh, batteries for this. The new Z, Jeff? I saw what would be described as like the spy illustrations kit. I had not. Uh, I'm a Z fan. I saw some really cool tricked out 240 Zs oh, yeah. in the Toyota trip pass. But tell me a little bit more about it, will you? Thank well, you. so right here where we are right now, uh, Monday night, we have an event called the SEMA Monday Night Reveal, and it's a, a chance to bring in some of the last high-profile vehicles into the SEMA show before the show actually starts on Tuesday morning. So right where you people are sitting underneath that SEMA show banner there, there's a red carpet ramp, we have a band, we bring out a bunch of cars. One of them that was debuted was the new Z, right? So Nissan has been building uh, the 240, the 280, the 360, the 300, the 350, the 370 Z. Now the new one comes out, and the DNA visually is right there. It looks like it's part I of have, the uh, two and a half hours of footage. Ones. But now it's powered by a twin turbo, 300 horsepower V6, six-speed manual transmission standard, rear-wheel drive, a couple of custom color options. The uh, gentleman from Nissan that was here, one of the designers of the vehicle, described it as a dance partner. You get in this car and you dance with it. It was so cool to see. It was revealed right here. Yeah, there's, there's just so many nice things, hot rods you can just go by. Uh, the choices are endless. Or the next version will come out. Oh, yeah. they, they start it off slow, they gotta wait a little bit. That's a nice 560 SL. How you doing? You get lost on the way to the car wash or what? It's our car. This looks great. What is it? Tell us about it. 87 uh, 560 SL. Uh, we did the audio. What kind of system do you have in there? It's a retro sound. Yeah, it's like retro inside the hall there. Nice units. How'd you enjoy the show? It was a great show. Well, like more people, but it was a great show. You know, it was quality versus quantity this year, don't you think? 100%, I agree. And that's not a bad thing. Nice clean Mercedes. Enjoy it. Yeah, Kevin, it's a high performance car. It's got a new stereo. That's what I think. Don't tell me you don't like a good stereo in this car. I'm a pioneer guy, Jeff. Sorry, I'm no partial. No partial. And you're also a pioneer. Oh, a body, Kevin. That's you know I love them, right? Uh, but this is an SRT duster, man. Check that thing out. A lot of attention. I remember we'd be able to buy them in a uh, recycler for three grand. Now you couldn't buy them for 40,000. Uh, love these a bodies. To me, the epitome of a muscle car right here. I remember when you could buy the six-cylinder versions for 300 bucks. Yeah, you get those twisters, the lime green twister, the look-alike. Or the gold duster. I certainly do. My sister-in-law had one. Yeah. How are you? Good to see you guys. Oh, this is the bad way. Check that out. So what's inside the engine here? LSX 376 supercharged with Take us through the drivetrain to the rear end. We got a uh, spring uh, drive shaft with the uh, 411s in the rear. 
So besides the association with your car, is there, other, is there another backstory to this build? Yeah, that people really like it here. And it's been in my family and we've decided to do it one more time. I'll tell you what, you did a really nice job. I love that paint. I love the fact that it's a project with your kids. We see so much more of that. We're going to get a lot more eyeballs, a lot more attention across the street there at the west side. So thanks for coming on Chip. Chip and Chip, right? All right, guys, take it easy, man. I think that one more. Nice body kit, Kevin. Another one of the kind that you only see here at the single show. That's yeah. from New York too, nice. Paul, you doing your job here? Because otherwise, you know, we got we got HR right down the hall there. Ken, who'd you have dinner with last night? Uh, let's see, uh, about 4,000 of my closest friends. We had dinner with Mark Davis and some of us didn't even know who he was up there, right? We've got a gladiator and a half coming up here, Joe, and it's purple. Yeah, not now. Not now. I'm working here. How you doing? What's your name? Shelby. Hi, Shelby. Who's that with you over there, that little troublemaker? Shelby and Shelby? Shelby and Shelby. What kind of trouble you two been getting into? A lot. Can I come with you? Tell us about the truck. Hop in the back, huh? Tell us a little bit about the truck. Awesome, by young kids too, we love it. I'll see you two later. Right in the middle there, that's where I'm gonna end up. You're damn right, Joe. All right, Kevin, more clean trucks looking good. Now here's a vehicle that got a lot of attention when it first broke out, the Gladiator, now look at them. Yeah, they're growing like crazy. Amazing. A little tandem action back there. Right. Camaros, I see them everywhere, Kevin. Everybody's enjoying their time with the Camaro, chew muscle cars. I would screw my hair up if I had to get in and out of that thing, you know, so I, I gotta watch it. Well, this one coming up's got a sunroof, that might help. Yeah. Let me ask you a quick question. Is this, uh, this is a wrap? Yeah. Is there a name for this color? Uh, Cobalt Ocean. Cobalt Ocean. Cobalt Ocean. Very cool. Great looking car. I love the wraps because you can change your mind, peel it off, do it again in different colors. Hey, how you doing? Thank you, baby. So we got a, a Skyjack F-250 over here. Tell me about the truck. So it's an homage to the military. Uh, I expect my family to be in the military. What branch is it? All four. Oh, right on. So uh, I like this week. All four of the major ones. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so the graphics got the flag, it's got some short soldier silhouettes and some helicopters and stuff. Uh, what else has been done to this? Uh, badges, grill, a little bit of everything. And how often do you get a chance to use this truck? Is this a show? This is your daily driver. Absolutely. We're going to build it, might as well use it. Well, that is the most important thing. Very cool, nice work, and uh, to all of our military active and veterans, we appreciate the tribute. Thank you, man. Kev, once again, we're going to give a shout out to our sponsors of the SEMA group this year, our friends from London's College. Fuck those guys, had a chance to hang out with uh, Shane and Dennis. Uh, they always have some of the coolest cars working in their veterans display. And our friends over at BASF. You know, yesterday was another big day, Kevin, inside yeah. that North Hall. Uh, our man Chip Foose was given the city, or the key to the city. It was Chip Foose Day in Las Vegas yesterday. No, it's today. All right. They presented this award to Mr. Foose yesterday, but today, which is what, November 4th? Every year, from now on, is Chip Foose Day here in Las Vegas. So how cool is that? I must have got the pre-announcement yesterday, and it was, you know, that if he didn't get to the North Hall, you missed it because it must have been about 20 of Chip Foose's private collection is on display. Well, these are cars that, that there's four Riddler winners there. I don't think there's ever been four Riddlers in one building at any time ever. Uh, two America's Most Beautiful Roadster winners, an overhauling car, a couple of Boyd's cars, just insane stuff. But uh, I was talking to Chip earlier, and, and I forgot to ask him, you know, I think if 
what happens on uh, on ship's first day? Do they steal everybody's car and bring it and bring it back to them a week later? Oh, they said the key opens up just about everything in this town. We're in for a good night tonight, huh? That's right, my friend. All right. It's the SEMA cruise. You know, we used to roll this thing into the night. I remember being out here in the dark, we go from hot sun to cool nighttime. Who knows? It's rolling along at a nice clip. Got a little little flex up here, looking good. You know, the engineering on these vehicles, Kevin, is just amazing. They make them go up, down, sideways, 360s. And you know what? Before when you see this type of stuff, it'd be a little sketchy. You know, it's like when the spindle first came out. No one really knew. But now when you see vehicles that are engineered like this, they're tight. It's quality. Yeah. You can count on it. Um, there's no more just show vehicles. These are vehicles that actually you can depend on. Nice job to all those guys and all these large trucks. So, uh, speaking of show cars, this beautiful lowrider, man, tell me about it. Yeah, this is 66 Apollo. This is Lifestyle Car Club. Just, you know, come out, represent where I want to. Um, spray guns. Just out here having a good time. I'm having a good time just checking it out, ladies and gentlemen. Low Lifestyle Car Club in the house. Heck yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead and jump, Joe. I'm going to go for the contact time. <laughs> Come on, guys. Nice and slow. I'm gonna... There we go. There we go. All right. All right, so, Joe, hey, I got a special special announcement, right? So, let's ask everybody here in the crowd, who was here last time in 19 at the SEMA Cruise? Raise your hand. Let's clap. Let's make some noise. Let's see. We have a lot of repeat people that have come back since 19. And 19 was a, an interesting year because your buddy, uh, Elon Musk, was kind of making a mess of the SEMA Cruise. So, I really want to issue a, a little bit of an apology. So, last time, you guys remember that right in the middle of the cruise, which was on the other side of the building, was a big hole in the ground and a big pile of dust, right? And we were all sitting there breathing the dust and the sunshine was coming through the dust and the cars were going through the dust and blowing it all over the place. Well, that's because Elon Musk was digging a big hole underground for the Tesla tunnel deal that starts back over there and ends up over at the West Hall, right underneath here. And it's a great project and it offers a really nice service to everybody who is going to attend an event here at the Las Vegas Convention Center. Because now you just jump in a Tesla and they just drive you here or there in a minute and a half Is instead it? of 15 minutes. But it? it made for a kind of a dusty situation. So I just say I appreciate everybody for hanging with us, even though pardon Elon's dust. Hey, Kev, I'm here with my girl Kaylee. How you doing, Kaylee? You remember me? I'm that guy reminded you of your uncle? I know. Come on over here, honey. All right, so Kaylee was a part of the uh, competition with the SEMA Young Guns. Right on. And she was hanging out, I think she was, uh, let's see, Center Hall. Come on over here. She was with her boyfriend, because he wouldn't even get to talk to her. But you'll see why. Kaylee, how was the show for you, doll? It was so much fun. I had a great time. What was the most fun that you had? Over what? Was it just watching people enjoy your car? Or was it just the whole experience? talking already about your next project. What is it? It's a 1991 Miata and my How about it? Kaylee, do you mind asking your age? I know you're not supposed to ask women their age, but I want to make a point here. Um, I just turned 21. Just turned 21, guys, building her own cars. How about another round of applause for Kaylee, huh? Yeah. Look forward to seeing you back here next year, too, okay? Exactly. I'll see you next time. Right. How nice of you. Hey, let's get her back in line here. Yeah, and all of a sudden it, it, it felt like Taco Tuesday for a minute there with that cheap playing the cold extra music. I was like, wow, gonna get hungry out here tonight. Here comes a mystical rap C8. Joe, you'd, you'd look good in a new Corvette, Joe. I had a 99. And then my neighbor makes a joke about me having some kind of so instead he bought a Porsche. I bought five of them just to piss her off. I parked them outside. And look at the paint on this 57 drop top Chevy here. Iconic hot rod. This is, you know, when you think about hot rods, the shoe box is just looking nice now. Heck yeah. They don't look too damn happy though. Right. But that's how it is. 
to Vegas. You know? Hey, Kev, the biggest lie in Las Vegas? I'm about even. Uh, yeah. How about Scott Kaleem? This guy shot more covers of Hot Rod yep. Magazine than jeans I went through this week. No, he's my man, Scott. Scott, how, you've seen a thousand Cena shows. How's it been for you? We got my man Rick Husong over here laying low with his iPhone. This is the man behind everything that goes on, right? That's right. Thank you so much, Rick, for putting this one on. Cena Central, where Kevin's been hanging out interviewing everybody. The Cena Hall of Fame. The Cena Cruise. You know, it's kind of neat. Every single person here has seen photographs shot by Scott Colleen, whether you know it or not. This stuff is just everywhere. It has been for years. That's dynamite, so that's kind of neat. Kevin, we have Slash from Guns N' Roses right there. Slash, thanks for coming in. Yeah. Uh, slash, and Burn. Yep. Hey, anybody see the fat Vin Diesel walking around? Did you see him? You guys see him? Naming everything. It's like, come on, man. Hit the gym. I fell for it for a second. I said, now you're going to be getting that bad, right? You know, Joe, the idea is to, the idea is to make friends with the crowd. Oh, I'm sorry, kid. Yeah. Check their notes. It's in your notes. Right. 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 All right, step one be nice. Kev, I usually have like two beers with me by now. This is a weak crowd. No one's pumping me up, right? The battle, did you bring anything? No, was that a hint? All those pro golfers are they're big on the bait pens. Those guys, they're all stoned out there playing golf. I got out of the uh, car when I first arrived in town. This opium bin. This whole town's on weed. It's great now. How you doing over there? Do I want to post up with that Come on over here. You got my attention. Joe, I may need help over here. Come on over. Yeah, so pretty cool. A whole bunch of C7 Corvettes rolling through. You know, when the C8 came out, a lot of the C7s uh, got a little bit lost in the shadows, but these are awesome, awesome cars as well. They certainly are, Kevin. Look, this vehicle's got a lot of attention, a lot of hype. It's saying it's the best car you can buy. What's all the hype behind these vehicles? Is it all true? What's your name or where you from? I'm Jacob Holt. Hey, how was the trip out from New York City? Did you bring any pizza? Did you bring me a thin slice? What kind of reception did the vet get? How does it drive? Tell somebody who's never been in a Corvette. What kind of experience would you get in this car every day? 10 out of 10. Awesome. New Corvettes. My man from New York City rolling down there at 300. A little rap action. Exterior. Congratulations to you. Get her over there to see me ignite and somebody else can enjoy it too. I would drive one of those guys. They look nice, man. Oh yeah. yeah. And they're everywhere. You've got a, uh, a really cool blue Shelby GT350 coming your way. License plate says Voodoo, which refers to the black plane Frank V8 motor under the hood. See more of the Optima Ultimate Streetcar competitors rolling through. Absolutely. And it's funny, Kevin, to see the evolution of those engines because right out of the box it was heavy, hardcore muscle. Now we're seeing Beamers and everybody else jump in on the fun, huh? Yeah. Well, and thanks to our performance aftermarket, now you can have a classic muscle car that can stay on the track with the more modern performance cars. You know, a lot of these cars remind me of the Buick Regal. Yeah, how many? What were you thinking? No, I was kidding. Stop. Yeah, well, this is Grand National or GM. Oh, okay. That's where I screwed up. In 85, I bought a Monte Carlo SS, and I should have waited to buy the Grand National. But no. <laughs> Both are cool. Yeah, once again, as a reminder, if you'd like to pick up a little uh, memento from the SEMA show, uh, maybe like one of these shirts, or a hat, or a 
shop class, so whatever he's got over there. These stores are going to be open throughout the rest of today, tonight. You can also go online and purchase them afterwards. Hey Joe, uh, this is kind of cool. Tell me about the uh, the Cadillac V Performance Academy at the Spring Mountain Raceway. Well, we've got the V Performance Academy that's now using the new Blackwing. So if you are a new Blackwing owner, give me a call. So the Blackwing, and we can walk a little bit, the Blackwing Cadillac engine is one that completely blew my mind. I think it, it ended up being a two-year only engine, a 4.2 liter V8, hot V design, twin turbo, somewhere around 550 horsepower, V-series, and then it was a clean sheet design, only did it a couple years, but now they're doing uh, uh, six two liters in the in the CT6Bs, right? Yes. Got it. Here we go. <laughs> this car doesn't want to go slow. Thank you for that. That's a D6B is a bad machine. You know, Kevin, we haven't had any oil downs yet. We haven't had any overheating. We haven't had any problems. Remember all the problems we would have on the cruise back in the day? Joe, I remember one year we had built a, uh, a SEMA car in our shop, a 68 Camaro. It had a 490 inch big block Chevy in it. All the so do you have a car here? Detroit speed no, I don't. I'm working for Truck Hero. Hero. What's up? So no, I don't. I'm working for Truck Hero. Mirror okay. smooth paint. The owner was with us. The car was on display right behind these bleachers in the, uh, in the Magna Flow display. And it's time to start the SEMA cruise. And the owner hasn't even taken possession of the car yet, right? He's here enjoying all the fanfare and everybody checking out his car. And I said, all right, listen, now get in the car and we're going to do the SEMA cruise as his basically first drive. And it rained. I remember. Remember that? I remember. I had another client who's called Vapor Lock. <laughs> yeah. Not only did it rain, but this thing was completely out of gas. And I'm looking at the fuel gauge. And the owner's in the passenger seat and he's like just taking it all in and he's getting past the rain and and I'm thinking, I just got to keep this thing running for another three blocks. We're parked at the Westgate Hotel, and I'm looking at that cage, and I'm hoping, and I'm hoping, I just got to get through. And what happens? Joe pulls me over and stops and wants to chat about the car. <laughs> hey, sometimes a little brain dead, Kevin. No, you had no idea, you know, and I'm just, you're going, hey, Kevin, tell me about the car. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> then there was the year that uh, Robert from Giovanna Wheels sneaks his car, takes the keys, and the car is in the cruise. No one could find him. Oh, man. He almost got a forklift to move the car. He, he barely made it and ran out. Go check out the golf livery. We had a couple of uh, stunning Porsches. Uh, one of them was in the top 12 as well for the uh, Super Family and the Golden City. Uh, how cool is it again? Just look at it. It's like eye candy. So, you know, we're all aware of the uh, push to have a, a clean environment, of course, and, and alternative sources of power. Your friends at Porsche, actually all of our friends at Porsche, are working on formulating synthetic gasoline, right? So it's a really high-tech project in which they're blending a synthesized fuel that a gasoline engine will burn and drive around and not really make any emissions to keep cars like that one and like your Porsche collection on the road and uh, any petrol burning car. Super cool idea. Hey, let's help him sell this car. What's your name, brother? Rich. Rich, tell us a little bit about the car. Uh, it's got a whole new wide body, 935 body kit. Uh, the BD Ford wheels, my right foot Vicer. Uh, we got Aerolift D2 suspension. It goes for 100 grand. What's, uh, what's planned for the next project? I see you have the vehicle for sale here. You're probably already working on the next one, right? Speedwalk SVK. So what's it gonna take? I got a little spending cash on me. What's it gonna take for me to grab those keys? Uh, 100K or best offer. Make one offer. Best offer? I'll drop 70 right now. Yeah. I'll send it. All right. Kev, I just got a car. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's here for Joe. He just bought a Porsche. Peter, I need 70 grand. <laughs> My wife would love it if I came home with that. I'm sure she would. This is more me, Kim. Yeah, that little GT3 is a That's beautiful me. car. Yep. How you doing? You, you don't see me? Just looking straight ahead? How's the show for you, man? What's your name? Eric. 
Eric, you could have won with the manual. You love PDK? PDK. What do you love the most about this car? Everything? Not even wrong. You had it on the track? I did, a few times. How'd you do? It's all right, not too bad. You placed the tires yet? Twice. Right. So you had a good time then. That's good to hear. I love it when they drive them. Looking good. GT3. Twice, Kevin. If I had his money, I'd burn mine. There you go. That's the SEMA crew. See, now the sun's going down. It's getting cool. It's nice, man. We're going to have a couple of drinks. We're going to have the Vila Sabuco with a little raviolis later. Yeah, don't remind me. We're going to go home tomorrow night, remembering all the cool times we had here at SEMA this week. All the bullets that we dodged. All those shots we had, all those the, the, good times we had. The friends that we saw that we have not seen in a couple of years. Oh my God, this guy follows me everywhere. I love him. This is my man, Paul Giotto. Paul, what's happening, baby? Hey, you're going to love this guy. Paul, welcome everybody to the SEMA crew. Thank you. Glad to come in, everybody. Not exactly what we were going for, but you know. All right, one more time. Hey, Paul, so what'd you like the most about the show? You. Ah, uh, see? Ah, uh, man. Oh, you gotta love him. Everybody loves Joe. Yes. Paul's one of the one people that listen to my podcast. One of the one. What a good time we're having here. Another more high-end BMW. That's clean, Kev. Oh, that's super series, clean. Seven series. Super clean. Followed up by a little Audi action. Looking good there. A little S4. Hold on, we gotta capture that. That's your sleeper car. These are the ones that when they pull up with me and I'm in the Porsche, it's kind of scared the shit out of you a little bit. So I let it back. All right, so we've got an illusion coming up, Joe. This looks like a uh, like a 70 GT500 convertible, but really it's something else. 2011 Mustang. This is uh, is this a a kit you built or you can purchase? Now this is a custom build by Duncan Brothers, Paducah, Kentucky. Well, those boys of Paducah really know how to make a cool and different looking car. Looks like the GT500, drives like the new one, so that means no leaks, no problems. You get home every night. All the safety equipment's still in, just like from the Ford factory. I notice you have your seatbelt on, but she doesn't, so there's a safety violation. She doesn't care. <laughs> Let's go, Brandon! <laughs> I would have never guessed he's from Kentucky. Not at all. <laughs> Check out that bitch in 67 Chanel. Hey Joe, there's something going on with this. Heck yeah, I can tell you one thing, that's not stopped. The whole car was shaking. I want none of that. How about the new Supras? I kept hearing a lot about those. You guys like these? Yeah, yeah. Great, great cars. I like the size, but you just stuff them in the garage. It's another car you can squeeze in there. They look kind of cool. They look great, man. They look good in that car. How you doing? You got a little Louis Vuitton shirt on there. What's your name? Gucci. Gucci, that's awesome. Gucci, Louis Vuitton, how are you going to get that dude, right? You know, I got a um, lucky. Gucci. All right, Joe, we're going to get another take here on the SEMA Cruise. This is uh, our co host for VA Radio, Mr. Mike Cubal Clark. Mike, what do you think? My gosh, man, I am blown away at the level of vehicles going by here. It's just different, everything. It's so loud. <laughs> Mike over here has got earplugs in. Joe's trying to funnel all this stuff into his head and inhale all the smoke, and he got earplugs in. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Uh, I think I'm going to need to see my ear doctor after this. But, uh, my, my gosh, I, I can't get over how impressive all these vehicles are. All the trucks, all the imports, all the domestic. Yeah, it's on, and uh, I, so I actually keep count. I think we're going to have 12 or 1,300 cars. Where are we at now? Uh, 
Um, I, I don't know, man. You lost count? Oh, Mikey! I gotta get some more. Oh, 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 oh. Usually I want to talk to the driver, but not this guy. Hey, hey, I'm talking over here. All right, usually I want... All right, usually I like to talk to the driver, but not in this case. What's your name? My name is Jasmine Pham. How are you doing today? I'm great, Jasmine. Now, you were rocking and rolling and grooving. You had a good time, I can tell, didn't you? Yes, it's a blessing to be alive. Certainly is. And that's blessing sure. to look at you and this nice car and their driver. Have a good time. We'll see you over at the SEMA cruise. It is a blessing. It is, Joe. All right. I got to give God a call after this week. I'll tell you that. All right. You know, Kevin, I wonder how many actual um, entrants there are this year in this Optima Ultimate Streetcar Challenge because they just continue to come. Yeah, I heard there's over a hundred. And you're on, you stay on that side. There's a driver on your side of the window that's coming up. Oh, I saw that. All right. Dude, you put the steering wheel on the wrong side. What's your name? Omar. Omar, what's happening? Have a good time at this year's SEMA show? Hell yeah. Who's with you? Uh, my girlfriend right here. What's her name? Maiden. How are you? Having a good time? Love the eyelashes. Get over there and have a good time. So many beautiful cars. So many beautiful people. And you, you troublemaker. What's your name? Have you had a good time at the show? How much trouble did your driver get in this trip? A lot. How about you? A little, but we're not telling. That's why they come here, folks. They do things they don't normally do. All right, Joe, I got your Grand National you missed out on over here. Oh, yeah. Tell me about this one, man. Uh, it's an 86 Buick T-Type. It's not really uh, much of a T-Type anymore, but... No, so the T-Type was the car that had the performance attributes of the Grand National but didn't have the name. So these came in a bunch of different colors, not just black. And it surprised a lot of people to stop with. Totally. I probably was way uh, better off starting with the Regal instead of a T-Type, uh, cost-wise. But yeah, it's a pretty rowdy car. So it sounds awesome. We'll have you move up a little bit. We'll keep the show moving. Uh, you got to tell me what's under the hood. you got a giant heat exchanger with the, a hole in the hood there. What's that? It's uh, basically a V-mounted heat exchanger for a dry sum 427 LS. Um, basically a culmination of the LA built this car and um, pretty proud of it. Feel free to go to the Optima search for the ultimate street car and check it out. There you go, Joe. This is the car that was built by the most talented people in LA. Thank you for bringing it out. Uh, Kev, I'm a little busy right now, okay? Enough with the cars. <laughs> So uh, tell everybody, uh, Dean, your, your man Rich is out there. I usually can tell because he's got the Superman shirt on. What's your husband been up to this week? You know what, he just has the time of his life. His dream is always in tour with SEMA. He didn't be back after this last year. It's truly, I want to say dream come true, but it is to be out here and be a part of the event. Everyone coming back out here, not letting COVID stop us, and just enjoying everybody living their dream. It's, it's a gift. So you're a local here, and this is not your first SEMA show. Was there anything specific about this year's show besides what you just said? Was there anything else that maybe, um, I don't know, put a smile on your face? You know what, just seeing all the families out here, the families, the little kids that are parents that are passing down the legacy of taking and really appreciating all that goes into the hard work and dreams to just put together these cars and with the unity and the family time that comes with it. And, you know, and we got a little bit more of that today because we selectively let some consumers come into the show. There were some families, there's a lot of guys with their girlfriends holding hands, checking out the cars. And, you know, there was a time that people were kind of against having consumers come in. But I think that this show, Kevin, reflects the fact that having some consumers come in, especially the last day, and then to join us at Seam Ignited, it plants a seed. And who knows, maybe from that seed a little flower grows and somebody gets into the business or builds a car. Or, um, I don't know. They get inspired, man. Comes here and checks out the SEMA Cruise. Yeah. Love it. All right, we're live. SEMA Cruise in the stands, Kevin.
Heck yeah, Joe. So this thing, one of the cars that I saw it was on display in the McGuire's booth, and uh, it's an inspiration. It, it is so black, so straight, so beautiful. Built by uh, Miranda right? Yes, sir. So tell me about the 67. Uh, LS3, chassis swap, uh, manual transmission, all the goods, all the goods. Yes, he he uh, he shoots all the goods. Thank, thanks for uh, showing it to us. This thing, let's let me help you direct traffic here. Hold on one sec. Let this uh, SRT go by, and then you can pull in in front of the Honda. Uh, this is one of those cars where he's like, yeah, you know, it's black, it's cool. Um, they made a zillion parts on this. There's CNC machining all over the place. They changed the look of the car, the body panels, the fitment. It is beautiful. Very very nice car. Hey, Kevin, so uh, last night we had a lot of activities going on inside the big banquet room. Any special highlights that you could take? <laughs> slug in the group, Kevin. No, sir. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work. Okay, Kev, so anything, any insight from that banquet last night? Uh, lots of insight, man. I, I think there's a couple things that uh, were, were interesting to, uh, to ponder upon, and that is that, like I said before, we, we all saw the show and everything else that we did get stopped in 2020 so it's been my mission and i'm sharing this with everybody to just take a moment and look around and be here and appreciate what's going on appreciate that we're all back here at the scene of you guys are seeing the hottest cars in the country right in front of you that went away and now it's back don't take any minute any person or any opportunity for granted ever again that's what i learned here this year well, we had a chance to catch up with a lot of our old friends. We see Brad Gerber over there in the NHRA yeah. booth. Uh, Brian Lones is killing it. Uh, the voice of NHRA for those folks who are NHRA fans, which is probably everybody here. Uh, we saw my man Clarence Barnes appearing over at uh, one of the exhibitors here at the show. Look at this guy. Hey, I got a really clean Mopar here real fast. Talk about the car. This is a uh, 73 Roadrunner with a hell of an engine in it. We call it the Hell Runner. The Hell Runner. Well, it sounds awesome. You still kept the heavy badge on it. This is the fuselage style design. Great car. Thanks for bringing it. Hey, where's my man Thomas? Thomas. You know, every year, Kevin, I either take over some bus boy or waiter or bellman or somebody that's helping us out along the way and we turn them on to SEMA. And one of my main men, who I've known forever, is Thomas. He used to work over at a cool restaurant we go to, and now he comes and helps us out. It was also great to see those kind of friends too, you know, the ones that you met along the way. Why sure, go enjoy the show. Yeah, and, and another revelation, this is, uh, this is my 25th SEMA show. And not only that, I got a chance to see a whole bunch of people that were here at my very first 25 years ago. So this industry is great. People get in it, they stay in it, they love to be in it, they grow. And it's always great to see enthusiasts and fans and, uh, and talk cars and have great times. Another one of the fuselage style Mopars, that one looks like a Charger. 73, 72, Kevin? 72. Huh? I still got it. Kind of an underappreciated style that's gaining a lot of popularity these days. How you doing, Mopar man? So this, but we're gonna let you tell the story. Come on over here. While he's getting parked, check out this beautiful Land Cruiser, man. Unbelievably clean truck. All right, come on over, Mr. Mopar man. This All right, Mopar man. Clean, give us the backstory on this clean Plymouth. So this is Project Electrolyte. This is the electric Mopar. This is the electric Mopar. What's your name, first of all? Is it uh, Kevin? Where are you from, Kev? Uh, but yeah, my name is Kevin Erickson. I'm from Denver, Colorado. So uh, electric, look at this dash you've got here. What were some of the biggest challenges you had converting this into electric? Uh, everything was new. You know, I'm a gas head just like everyone else, turbos and superchargers, and I just had to learn something new. So. Deep uphill climb, but uh, the future is great for muscle cars. 
So what kind of stories do you have when people expect to pop up and see a 383 or a 3 or a 440 and they find out there's neither one's lurking inside? I just tell them I got a big block 400 volts. 400 volts. Hey, look, man, it's, it's nice to have something unique. It's the electric light, Plymouth, looking good. Thanks, Kevin. Paul's going to get you back in the groove before you get rear ended, all right? Paul, how you doing? How about a nice round of applause for Paul, huh? Paul Cumlin has been with us working all these years, helping yeah. us out. Thank you, Paul. It was your birthday recently, wasn't it? 85 years old, Paul Cumlin, everybody, still here. Yep, I told him. Good to see you, Paul. He says it's good to be seen at my age. Uh, don't look now, but somebody left something on the top of your truck. And on the top of his head. Somebody should get up there and bring it down. Yeah. This, uh, you remember watching the TV show Knight Rider, where the, the, the car would come out of the moving semi on the highway, and then you know, they'd cruise off? I almost want to try that. Yeah, come on on. <laughs> yeah. i got to make sure my insurance policy's paid. I got an insurance guy for you, Kent. I know you do. Any boom bots. I got boom bots. Any boom bots. Hey, your mother called. She wants her car back. Oh, man. Hey, I think that Volvo hides a couple of secrets. I, I wouldn't put anything past that. You're the guy with the Mercedes with the fancy radio. Get that out of here. Please, let's see your show. All right, I gotta be nice. That's what they say. Hey, Kevin, you know how much I got paid this year? How much, Joe? You won't believe what they pay me. Johnny Spark! Oh, come here. First of all, you ran out on paying the drinks last night at Piero's, you frit. Oh, boy. So that's $85 that you owe me. Oh, boy. Anybody ever hear of B&M Automotive? Heck yeah, B&M Automotive. All right. In the family right here, Johnny, you and I were having drinks at Piero. It's been a great show for you. Excellent show. Phenomenal turnout. Absolutely blows me away that everybody made the trip, and I'm really happy and proud of everybody for being here. So everybody who's concerned about the show, concerned about the show, concerned about the show, what do you have to say about all the guys who stayed home? They missed out. They all missed out. They all missed out, but you didn't. Johnny Spar here, right here, folks, at the SEMA show. Yeah, Joe, so I've got a show car coming up. This one is called the Casanova, and it was built by our friends at the custom shop. Uh, tell me about it real fast. Uh, it's a 67 Nova that lays on the ground, LS2, uh, Pro Charge, uh, super Stacked injection system, uh, all on air ride, Sony equipment, uh, full custom interior. Yeah, full custom interior. This is one of those cars that you can sneak in and out of the neighborhood with also. I love to see cool show cars that uh, command attention. You know, because here at the SEMA show, you got to be different to stand out. The Casanova does it. This is a John Wargo build, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see the guys? They... So, Kev, the matching paint and wheels wasn't enough. They didn't do the matching shirt. Nice. Especially with Halloween just around the corner. And, uh, you know, kind of, yeah, yeah. Did I see you in Saudi Arabia? Yes, you did. I can't shake this guy. He follows me everywhere. Christ. I'm not following you. Hey, Peter almost threw you guys out of Saudi Arabia, if I remember. Hey, Peter, how we doing? Johnny Wargo, look at you. Hey, look, John. See Peter up there? <laughs> hey, Dora right there. Big Chad. Come on over. Hey, everybody here of MB Court and Max Sonics? My man Chad over here. Chad, come on over. Now poor Chad, he looks like he's having a good time. What you don't know is that he's been here working. Working, working, working. But you, how many shows you do this year, Chad? Probably about 25 shows this year. 25 shows on the road. He drives the rig, sets it all up. He's going to change the rig, all the products from show to show to show. It's exhausting. Everywhere I go, he's always there before me and leaves afterwards. But he's, you still love it though, don't you? Uh, it's great getting out in front of the fans and customers and stuff like that and seeing the excitement that we bring to everyone at the shows. 
Max Isaacson, that MD4, we're showing off all your new products. What's new for these guys for this year? Oh, we got stage uh, UTV products, a whole bunch of new uh, amplifiers, brand new speakers. I mean, it's crazy. So check out MB Cork, Hyphonics, Crunch, Autotech. I mean, you'll get all the new stuff. The website's all been updated this week. All right, so check them out. MB Cork, Max Sonics. Ask them for your Joe's Mini Bike Reunion discount. They'll charge you extra. Thank you, Chad. All right, Joe, here comes the chain smoker. Oh, I'll give me. Plastic. You like the diesel smoke, my man. It could be better than the mushrooms we did last night, huh, Jody? The ones on the pizza? Yeah, the ones on the pizza. You can replicate that, Jeff. There he is. If it makes smoke, Joe will smoke it. Only in Vegas, baby. Breakfast of champions. Where's the bait pen? <laughs> I was only joking. Uh, that's pretty damn good. You alright? Christ. My wife saw that video of you doing that years ago. She said, You're such an advanced person. You're welcome. That's it, man. Oh, we got a glass. Look at that smile. He's all stoned himself. Look at him. They keep coming, Joe. More and more. And all more. right. All right. Hey, Kevin. Yo. Where's that doll? Where's that beautiful wife of yours, Kelly? Oh, she's over here sitting at the table. Right Ask her how she likes the cruise for me, will you? I will certainly Hi, do that. please. And don't give Cue Ball that microphone anymore. Cue Ball's got a great face for radio, don't you think? Well, he's trying to keep count of all the cars. He's just happy to be here. Right over here so you can hear Joe a little bit better. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, this is my lovely wife, Kelly, who is also oh, the owner and the manager Kelly. of the V8 Speed and Resto Shop. Come to Illinois. How do you like the crew so far? It's amazing. I, I was just commenting to you all, honestly, that it's amazing how much better everybody is. Everybody is Kelly, will you tell them what you really like about the SEMA Cruise, please? The burnout. No. <laughs> he thought you were going to say Joe. I really like Joe. Joe's my favorite. Um, Joe gets great hugs. <laughs> Sorry, kid. I had a few drinks in me. Yeah, and a bunch of smoke. No, I'm really glad everybody's here. We're out. We're outside. We're enjoying ourselves. And uh, just the, the support to the industry that you see drive by you is just well, you know, kid, my wife, I've been coming to the SEMA show since uh, 1982. I know that. It's a long time, right? The other reason why I'm still married, Kevin, my wife's been to zero SEMA shows. There you go. <laughs> this is one of my favorite weeks. I love it. Well, this is like number, what number for you? 20 for me and uh, 25 for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think all 20, I came here with you. So it's tremendous that we get to experience this together, which a lot of, a lot of couples are here together. So okay, you two sure. get a room. We get the point, okay? You asked for it, Joe. I know. Love you, Joe. Kelly, I love you. Thanks for sharing Kevin with us. What'd you have, the tacos last night? Oh, Kevin. Hey, you forgot to pay your car. Didn't you know a big show is coming up? Love it. Love the patina. Looking good, man. Looking good. Beautiful orange Camaro here at the right time of day to see it with the golden light. Yes, you got it at CarMax, I see, Kev. Hugger orange? You can stop waving now, I'm right here. For, for sale? For sale? Hold on for a second. You already have your next project already planned? Columbia. All right, you're from Columbia, which means I should get a deal on this car. How much is it? <laughs> Did you bring any? Sorry, just kidding. Joe. So how about the Cherokee, man? Oh, yeah, no, oh, Randy Weaver. Oh, come over here, Randy Weaver. Yeah, I've been this vehicle. Now call me crazy. I 
never seen the vehicle. I've had a million dollars in car hands. Uh, Pioneer car audio. Oh yeah. Hey, Randy Weaver here, one of the hottest builders in this industry. Check out any event that's taking place this year. He's probably won. He's modest, and I'll tell you, he'll kick our ass because he's a boxer too. Randy, how was the show? It was awesome. Can't wait to come back next year. Uh, you saw a lot of young guys up there getting some focus this year at the show. How cool is it to see that? It's awesome to see these young guys keep rolling. You know, all the inspiration, and it just got to keep trucking. So talk a little bit about this vehicle. 1975 Jeep Wagoneer, twin turbo LS, built the chassis for it, gladiator front end, a lot of metal work. How are the tunes? What's that? How do you like those tunes? Badass. Randy Weaver right here at Weaver's Customs. It was on the Power Tour. Um, what a guy. What a great, great guy. Like I said, too. Don't kick your ass. Such a cool car. Remember when those things came out? And today we're seeing twin turbo LS's in that platform. Who would have thought? It is, you know, Kevin, the engineering and the builds that we see now, you know, before one or two vehicles would stop you in your tracks, right? Uh, unfortunately, you see so many 69 Camaros or different show trucks, you, you almost walk by them. I was stopping constantly as I walked around the scene of the show. Oh, yeah. Many of you did. The cars are just amazing. Just well, superb quality. You know, what I love is the cars that don't look like there's a whole lot going on, but then you got to ask and find out the real surprise. Like the satellite. Who would have thought that that car was electric power? You well, don't walk by that vehicle unless there's no exhaust on the back. That's right. Like this Toyota coming towards right now. I bet there's a story there. Yeah. Let's find out about it, Kip. Come on over. Nice. Right, so it looks like a heavy Howard lift. All right, come on over, brother. What's your name? How about that? All right, you're going to work with me on that one. So, oh, I'm going to come up a little bit more. Come on up. Very nice vehicle. Tell us a little bit about it. He came from Japan. Well, Christ, I knew that. <laughs> What year is this vehicle? 1984. What modifications have you had? Engine work and an exterior mod. What, did you get a good reception here at the show? Yes, it is. Where can folks find out more about you? Uh, www.mastermind88.com Check out, folks. Nice, clean little ride, little import, clean little shoes, looking good. Enjoy your show. I told you there was a story there, Joe. Yeah, thanks for nothing. Christ. <laughs> Oh, Rory. Rory, are you with your son? Oh, come on over here. I got to gotta find out more about this. This is Rory. Hey, how many of you guys watch West Coast Customs? You see West Coast Customs up there? Yeah. Dude, Rory was a part of that show back when it was cool. Come on over here. Come on over here. Like, if you're into putting the aquariums in the back of your car, there was West Coast Customs, right? All right. But now, Rory, look at him. He went from being, um, uh, what do you call it, a reality TV star to running businesses. What's happening with you, my man, Rory? We're just... Glad to be at the SEMA show in person with all our friends like you, Joe. Everybody give it up for Joe. He's yeah. the man. Rory, you've uh, had a chance to experience a lot of SEMA shows. This year was a special one for you. Tell everybody why. I brought my son to the SEMA show. He's a car fanatic. His name's Duke. Everybody give it up for my eight-year-old son, Duke. Hey, Duke, how you doing over there? Uh, Duke's a little shy. Duke, did you have a good time with your dad? What were your favorite car? Um, probably the Bugatti Diva. Ooh, expensive taste for an eight-year-old. So he, he looks like you. He's, he's a talker like you, I can tell as well. We look forward to seeing him. I'm going to be watching you for the next 10, 20 years. And someday you may be doing what I'm doing, so I'll see you next time, okay? All right, Rory, take it easy, baby. Rory! Well, look at you! All these people bringing their, like, spouses and their kids, it makes me feel bad. I leave all mine home. Well, you said there's a reason for it. Yeah, I want to stay married. You know, it's expensive to be divorced. Hey, check out this slam bag finale coming your way with a custom fat bicycle in the back, man. Yeah, you may see a lot of that. You see a lot of the, uh, remember the old vintage mini bikes, too? They're always in the back of the cars, too, right? Heck yeah. Look at you guys. Well, let's see what we got here. We got a little... Damn, that ain't just no bicycle, that's a custom bicycle, just like the rest of this truck. Yeah, just awesome. Everywhere. What do we got? 29 inch wheels on this guy? What size wheels we got on this vehicle? 28. That was close. I was just guessing too. Christ. 
I don't do this shit professionally. What's three inches, Joe? Hey, watch that, Kevin. Don't you even get me started on that rumor. It's nice. I couldn't even get this in my driveway, though. Oh, it goes up, too. I forget. How about all these air ride systems? You remember the AccuAir? Yep. I tech all these guys, you go up and down, you go sideways, shit, one of them was doing a 180. Super cool blazer. See, now this Camaro confused me with that wrap. I thought it was a sport compact car for a minute. Just amazing. Even the graphics, look how, how they've evolved over the years. Before it was just one nasty black bat. That was a wrap. Now they're as nice as some of the paint shops out there. You know, one, of, over there. one of the highest nice. little troublemakers, you like it to tell by looking at you, you got trouble written all over. Go around the over now. One of the hottest platforms out right now, of course, are the Chevy C10s. And we're seeing some that are done as full on competition cars, man. Tell me about this one. On the spot, huh? It's a 70 C10. Nice. Uh, pretty heavily modified. Running an LS3. 600 horsepower. Tell me about the suspension. Uh, front end's a Detroit Speed front end. Front end JRI, JRI coilovers all around. Hanging out in front. And this is a competitor in the uh, Optima Ultimate Streetcar Challenge. Yes. And we uh, did our Speed Stop Challenge yesterday or today. We're all heading out to Las Vegas Motor Speedway to do the autocross and road course uh, tomorrow and the next day. Spectators are welcome. Right on. Very cool truck. Try not to get too excited about it, but good luck at the track. Kevin, we got our friends from Laid Back up here, rolling up. Yeah. Got the mine on the money and the money on the mine. That's right. Laid Back. Kevin, I got dinner at 7 o'clock. We got to get this shit going. Come on, man. There's no end in sight, my friend. You might want to call and bump that reservation. I don't need reservations. I walk in, I tell them I know Joe Donato. There you go. You walk in and everybody else has reservations. I slipped out on every tab so far this week. I tell them I'm going to the bathroom, I don't come back. I swear to God, it's been great. I know, he did. Private. You can do it anywhere. Buffets. See, here's another thing now, Kevin. Yes, can you put some vodka in there, Rick? Anybody can give me water. Now, Kev, like, I don't know if this is a, an old one that's new or a new one that's old. That's right. It's, it's both. Yes. Yeah, see? I can now tell a little bit. This tells me a little bit. I saw this car inside. This is a really nice job. All the cues from the old style, a little bit of the new style. Nice. 69 Mustang. I remember being at Don Downtown Ford. Put my hands up the window to see that Mustang, and my lips stuck to the freaking window. There you go. And I've always wanted one. Here come one of those two. The three-door Suburban from Aces Fuel Injection with a super cool color scheme on the roof, kind of like a, a Mexican blanket theme. Just great eye candy in that wrap. It's a Spanish blanket. Yeah. Technically, that would have been 70 Jack from RT. Oh yeah, our friend from me, that's where my man Clarence Barnes is signing autograph. That's it. Ace's fuel injection. Maybe you'll see him at the Street Machine Nationals this year. They, they loaded up the heavy hitters, my man formerly from the other guys, now with the right guy. Looking good. Oh yeah. Ace's fuel injection, check them out. Nice guys too. See, to me that's the whole thing. I only want to be with people I like. That's my guys at Ace's. How about that RT Challenger in Sublime Green? Love it. Love the Mopars. I already love. I always loved Mopars. We would come to work talking about dusters and all the guys at Carcraft got mad. They either like Camaros or Chevelles. All right, now this stuff's gonna start happening. I have to go blind. Almost got run over. Is this a tow truck? Kevin, what blind is and deaf. What do you guys do? Safety equipment, traffic markers, and that kind of stuff. He needs so, a few more lights on it. That's right. Well, you can't miss it. You're renting out in power failures. 
Oh yeah, the Cedar Cruise. We're cruising into the night, everybody. Want to thank our friends from Mothers, Wax and Polishes, our friends from BASF. I also want to thank all you guys for coming, especially you for coming. Heck yeah. All our friends up here, give yourself another round of applause, right? Let's keep this energy going because it's a big night ahead at Ignited as well. This is just the first stop, my friend. Hey, folks, at 11 o'clock today at the Tropicana, I'll be doing a little stand-up, come by and say hi. Kevin will be buying drinks. How about our friends up here at the very top? How you guys doing up here? You guys doing good? You guys having a good time up here? We didn't forget about you. We didn't forget about you. How about you folks up here? How about you in the pink? You good? You got the pink shoes and everything. Look at you. I almost wore those same shoes today. Jesus. Yeah, that would have been a I bet you do. What's your name, Steve? You starting trouble here? What's Steve? Steve Marshall. Where are you from? New York City. New York. How can I tell? Did you bring me a slice? Uh, no, we did not, but I'll come back to Ray's. I'll get you one. Hey, what's your favorite uh, part about the CB show this year, Ray? Man, I think it was, it was a 62-409 call today. Did you see that? Yeah, that call. You want me to make a call? Yeah, man, absolutely. We'll get, we'll get my New York connection a car, right? All right. Let's go check out the folks over here. Hey, remember, pretty soon we're going to have the news helicopters coming up. We're going to end up in the news. You guys doing good over here? All right. Having a good time? We're going to roll over to the west side afterwards. Check out Seam Ignited. What's your name? Andrew. Andrew, where are you from? Dallas, Texas. How's things in Dallas? Perfect. Are you sick of everybody moving to da Dallas? And everybody in the world is moving to Texas last time I checked. That's a good thing. Good thing? All right. How about the SEMA show? You having a good time here? Yes, sir. What was the most fun you had? What, what did you see that you liked the most? Besides me. <laughs> All right, our friends from Dallas in the house. Kev, my wife asked me if I wanted to move to Dallas. It's like, hell no, too hot. They got crocodiles and big bugs. Joe, here comes a full on rolling freak show. This thing is awesome. <laughs> has to be the welder up, guys, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, is that Steve Darnell? Oh, look, oh, Steve Darnell. Weld him up. I cannot stand this guy. You want me to tell you why? Why? Every time he comes on TV, my wife stops whatever the hell she's doing to see the cute little guy from Welder Up. Huh. Right? He wears the little cut-off shorts and the work boots. He got muscles and hair. I can't stand him. Well, tell him hello right now. Stevie! Look at you. <laughs> hey, you look a little bit better since the last time I saw you. What's up, Joker? Nothing, man. How's everybody enjoying SEMA? No, no, no. Look, I need him to get out. Put that thing in. Can you put this in action in part? Steve and his dad welded up this whole town. Yeah. All right? Steve Darnell, he welded up the whole town, him and his dad. Just welding stuff and building cars is something they do on the side. But every hotel, every bridge, every road, they welded welded up. Uh, he's one of my favorite guys. I know you do the TV, you don't do the TV. What are we doing now? Well, first of all, I just want to say thanks for everybody coming to Vegas. Listen, this is, this is my town. I was born in this Las Vegas. And it is so awesome to see car people come support this, even through this bullshit that we've been going through. And you guys rock, dude. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Steve Darnell, everybody. All right. Wow, it's that easy to get chicks. <laughs> Me, want to switch jobs? One interview, because they're jumping into the truck. I'm used to them jumping out of my truck. Nice. Hey, how about my man Thomas, everybody? How's your show, Thomas? It's awesome. I've always been wearing my name credential for like the last 20 years. All right. It's a SEMA cruise, baby. It sure is, man. It's a truck show for a little while, Joe. We got some really cool ones coming through. So if you say so. Oh, yeah. Hey, this Red Lightning. These things are awesome trucks. A lot of fun. Getting to be real collectible now. And uh, really awesome performers. Supercharged 5.4 liter V8. Tuned up suspension. Lowered from the factory. And today, the Lightning is now an electric, but not that one. That's gas burner right there. I see more lost Optima Ultimate Streetcar contestants. That's it. Got the little bikini top action with the rear bucket seats. Well, 
new Corvette action, a little not so new Corvette action, or new Broncos. Yep, we got a new uh, Bronco coming through. Okay, check this one out. So this is something you don't see every day. What year is this one? 1988. This is the uh, Mitsubishi? Chrysler Conquest, actually. Like Chrysler Conquest, which was the sister car of the Mitsubishi Starion GSR. Well, it And uh, this one doesn't sell in stock either. Not at all. No, not at all. <laughs> so uh, how is it as a competitor? I mean, you got a full custom dash and all kinds of stuff. Uh, it does really well in the outlaw class this year. That wasn't me. No D and E for me this year. Just running, just to race. Running to have fun. We'll go get him, buddy. Thanks for bringing it out. Thank you. Hey DJ, DJ Enoch, give us a little music, baby. All right, Vanishing Point car, 70 Challenger RT, 440, four speed. That was a great movie, Joe. You remember Vanishing Point? Kevin, a lot of things have vanished over the last couple of years for me, but yes, I do. Uh, what's Freiburger's version of Vanishing Point? What build do they have on Roadkill? Oh, yeah, what do you, what do you call that one? Yeah, we missed him this year. We missed our man, David Freiburger, from Roadkill, but... Uh, We'll see him around. We did have uh, John, uh, the Hot Rod editor, editor-in-chief. John was here. John McGann. Yeah, John McGann was here. We had uh, Doug Glad here. We had Mike Essex. We had uh, uh, Peter from Motor Trend, Eric Schwab. All those guys were here with us, and they were looking for content. They were not only looking for the cool cars, but they were looking for the, the stories of the owners of the cool cars. I will take those keys so fast from you, you're at work. Oh, how you doing? You are calling me. Where's the digits? I need some digits. I gotta scan this. I'm too old to scan shit. I just need to be able to call you. I need a phone number. Blue Angel? I'm the Dark Angel myself. That's what they call me. Looking good. Nice cutlass. I'll see you at the scene ignited. Yes. You heard the expression, Robert, like you stole it? That could be true. Could be. But you had a good point there before. The SEMA show is also a great place for the automotive media to come and the national media of all different kinds, but uh, we really mostly prefer the automotive stuff. Our friends from the Hemmings publications were here. Uh, Terry McGinn and all the editors from Hemmings Motor News, Hemmings Puzzle Machines, they were on site. Uh, and of course, all kinds of other websites. We got our media village down there, all kinds of people recording this event, so you'll be able to check it out on their channels and no doubt on YouTube and check out all the fun comments that uh, Joe and I get. <laughs> oh, don't be, don't be, don't be. <laughs> I hear I'm really big in Finland. You are. Only the western part. I don't eat that dry fish, so I, I wouldn't last too long over there. And they have warm beer, so that's going to be a problem for me. You know, I almost wore that same top today. I came this close. Yeah, I had the pumps working. Seen... Come on over. What's your name? Hold on, I gotta hear this. What's your name? Vanessa. Where are you from, Vanessa? Arizona. Who are you with? My husband, my son, and friends. So, did you have a good time? Yep. Nice. Where you, where, I'm sorry, where are you, you guys from again? Arizona? Yeah, we were out there uh, for the Sand Sports Super Show in October. It was 155 degrees in the shade. I, I still have. Well, it's nice, to br nice for you to bring that hot family from Arizona to us, and thank you. Hope you have a good time. Hey, see you next time, brother, okay? Did they come for the thank SEMA you. show or just for the SEMA cruise? Uh, let's ask him. Did you come for the show? Did you get to check out the show, or did you just come for the cruise? They came for the show as well, Kevin. Yes, right they did. Yeah, which was really cool. Well, okay. Yeah. For sure. Well, I get the sense. It's 10 of 6. We thought it would go a couple hours. We thought it started before. We could be coming anywhere about 70% through, 75% through. I don't know. Q Ball's keeping the count, but he keeps losing it. Yeah, you can't count on the Q Ball for that, though, Kevin. You know? So we got a gentleman here in the stands who is uh, holding up a Foose license plate 
like uh, expected to see Chip here. I'm not sure that he's coming. We'll find out later on. But did you get a chance to attend the Steve show? Uh, actually, I did. So uh, what did you think of the event? It was definitely worth it. People that didn't come out, you missed out. It was definitely worth it. Well, that's for sure. Did you get a chance to see the Foose experience? Uh, yes, I did. What was your favorite car there? No, honestly, the one with the father. Oh, yeah. Chip Foose's 56 uh, Ford pickup truck that belonged to his dad. That was Chip's very first car. Yeah. Since he was uh, 15. Yeah, he bought it in 1978. Oh. We're having a, a Chip Foose. It was old at that time. Well, that's the Foose trivia question that I did not know is when you were born. 76. Very cool. Hey, that's a good looking license plate. Thank you very much. Where are you from? I'm from Vegas! Right on. Thank you from Vegas! Yeah, Vegas in the house. What's, what's your name, buddy? Jonathan. Jonathan, thank you for coming out. Appreciate it, buddy. I hope you're having a good time. I sure am. So we're in front of Chop Stars. <laughs> Pushing the envelope on the biggest wheel you can put on a truck. Can we add a little help? It was uh, vanishing paint. That there you go, Thank you for my man out there in the stands for helping us with that. Sometimes they have a little brain pain. They come up with so many cool names for those roadkill cars. So oh, check, this, it. check this one up, Jim. Oh, a little rumpity rumpity. Looks like a little, I don't know. Nothing little. Tired altered. Huge. What's that, a Don Hampton blower on there, Kevin? Yeah, it's a big, tall blower. You can tell by the way it's surging. Come on over, brothers. Quit your bitching and come on over here. See, you pushed him, Kevin. Yeah. All right. Oh, now it's going to be on. He's got to tap, he's got to tap the car. I'm going to pull you up over here. Come on over. He's got to clear the throttle. Is that a blown Chrysler? So anyway, while you get him parked, we're going to talk to the guy with the Chevelle. All right. Hey, tell me about this beautiful Chevelle. Uh, 1970 Pro Touring LSX Twin Turbo T56. It works, you know. This car is so nice to have that much power. Have you really gotten a chance to crash this thing yet? No, uh, it's probably got 200 miles on it, so not much. Well, congratulations on the build. It's a beautiful Chevelle. Thanks for bringing it out. All right, Kevin, we're here with our guy. What's your name? Where are you from? Gosh darn hell. I'm from right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Welder up. All right, I was going to say, that's a familiar last name, so with welder up cars, we always expect the unexpected. Tell us a little bit about this. I see a big block Chrysler with a BBS blower on it and dual Hollies. How big are those Hollies? So it's got twin Holly 650s, a 671 blower on a 354 Hemi. So this is not like you pull up in a new Corvette or a new uh, Porsche. What kind of attraction, what kind of reaction do you get when you roll up with this vehicle? Yeah, it's just all eyeballs in one of these. I mean, every car guy has love for every car, but this definitely draws attention. Hey, this is better than walking around with a supermodel and a puppy right here, man. You got it. Well, look, did you have a good time at the SEMA show? Yes, yeah, great to be here at the SEMA show. It's a little slow, but I got to see a lot more. Uh, quality over quantity, right? Exactly. All right, brother, we'll see you over at SEMA Ignited. It's quit your bitching, a relative of Walter well, Ruff. BDS Supercharger, was that uh, Rick Dyer? Remember BDS back in the day, right, Kev? I do. Was that, was that Rick Dyer? Was he the guy at BDS? Yep, and then we had uh, Scott and Lance Railbeck, actually, from BDS, and then we had Don Hampton. Yeah, Craig, Craig, Craig Railsbeck recently passed, right? Well, they're dying to get out of here, Kevin. You know, it's <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's funny you mention that. We lost a few... Uh, icons in this industry this year. We did. But, uh, you know, we persevered. Anybody who did lose anybody during this time, um, lots of love out to you. Behind all the fun and excitement, life goes on. Sometimes it ends too. But, uh, hey, we're live. We're in Las Vegas. We hope everybody's having a good time. Thanks for sticking with us, folks. We really uh, appreciate it. There is more and more to come, folks, of all sorts of prizes. Big shout out to my man Superman, Rich and Ingus. Great to have Rich here helping us out. Keeps things running smooth. Always does it with a smile on his face. He's been working out. He lost a lot of weight. Nah, just kidding. So we've got a Ram 2500 heavy duty that's its own dance club built in. We got a smoke machine. We got lasers. Kev, they're hot boxing. We got people having a great time in the bed. They're hot boxing, Kev. Well, you should walk next to them. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's 
guys, we got the total opposite. We got Kev, I don't know if that's a weed or right exhaust. A little bit of both. All right, Joe, I got a great looking square body here. These trucks are becoming super, super popular too. Hi, right, what's your name? Jenna. Jenna, tell me about the truck. It's a 77 How long have you had this one? It's been done about a year. About a year. Who built it? Delta Hot Rods out of Vegas. Right on. Uh, what's under the hood? Sounds great. It's got a great rumble. Beautiful color. Thank you. Awesome. These trucks are great. You know, what's kind of fun is when uh, you find one of these things that's not all beat up because a lot of these trucks, you know, they work for a living. They're a truck. Kevin, I noticed that you pulled over the single woman driver. Uh, <clears throat> Joe, I'm all about promoting everybody in this industry. Just say it, kids. Oh, it's the SEMA Cruise. Into the night. That's it. Here come all the LEDs, my friend. Lighting up the night. I don't know if it gets any better than this, Kevin. Las Vegas, Friday night. Water bottles full of vodka. Thousands of cars. That too, from all over. I missed this, man. We totally missed this last year. It is so great to be back. I'm so blessed for the opportunity to be back here. So thank you. Okay, I had some pickup trucks. I had a 77 square body. I had a 94. Regular cab, short box. He's on the cover of Sport Truck Magazine. Yeah. I had a uh, 68 big lifted 4x4 truck that scares me and I sold. <laughs> and I recently had a pretty tricked out little GMC Canyon that I spiffed up a little bit. Whoops. I need a pickup truck in my life again, though. Well, so a little while ago, we heard from my wife. She drives a 17. Silverado Duramax 2500 Group Cab Long Bed. And uh, when she first bought it, she was driving home from the shop and said, There's something wrong with the truck. So, what do you mean? She said, Well, it was, it was driving on the road and it started to stutter. So it was like a problem. So, we took it out and drove it and it didn't do it for me, you know. She said, Maybe you gotta drive it faster. Well, we found out she was finding the rev limiter at 94 miles an hour, right? And of course, it started to stutter. And uh, she said, Well, you need to remove that. I had to point out that the reason the rev limiter is there is because of the tires. You know, the tires don't like to be that fast. It's that big of a truck, so she gave me one of those. Oh, man. Really? Another fine mix you got her into, Kevin. So, got her out of that one. She's taking her head well. Oh, that happened. Lots of crazy rumors. And none of it was really true. No, everybody showed up. Although, folks who remind you to maybe wear a mask or suggest it, uh, getting in and out was great. Uh, you had the opportunity to uh, actually stop and talk to somebody. And once you saw a vehicle, there was enough room to actually take a photo or maybe talk to the owner. Yeah. So, Again, all those folks who uh, contemplated whether or not to come or whether or not it was going to be worth the effort and the investment. If you stood home, you lost out. That's my take on it. For those of you who came, uh, you made the right call. It's a bad we thank you for being here with us. It's the Steve Cruz. It is. 2021 is brought to you by Mothers in BASF. My name is Joe Severgadio. I'm your host with our co-host, Kevin Osi, and I want to thank you all for giving us this chance to be out here, you know. It's, uh, we're just waiting to get kicked out. You know, this is a, this is a pinch me job for Kevin and I. And, it is. Uh, I can't tell you, Kevin, how much I've enjoyed having you with me, man. So thank you for all you do. Much love, brother. Joe, you know, when you called me up and said, hey, I want you to help me with this, I, I couldn't have gotten here faster. I think I was standing out here in April. Well, I'm glad you were, brother. You know, somebody asked me, they're like, aren't you upset that you have to wear a mask? 
inside the stage show, and I said, I don't care if they would make me wear a dress, I'm going to be here. I got pictures the last time you did that hit before. Uh, at least they're not on your phone. All right, we're rolling over to the West Lot for Seeing the Ignited. We're going to run through again the top four and uh, re-announce the Battle of the Builders winner. What an awesome shoe box that you got blue. I think it's a 55, so we got the Keystone boot. Flip Kikulas has been working on that vehicle for 10 years. I want to give a shout out to Eddie, uh, as well as uh, Jacob, uh, the other qualifiers. They did a great job there. It's going to be awesome to see those vehicles up close and personal. Uh, there's plenty of food there. There's plenty of drinks there. Uh, people keep asking about chip foods. They keep asking about the West Coast Justin guys and Hot Rod Bags. They'll all be over there. So join us. Uh, it's free to get in. And it'll probably go on till at least 9, 10 o'clock tonight. Uh, Kevin and I will roll over there afterwards. Have a chance to say hi to you guys, too. Joe, the... Uh... Patrick and the Las Vegas band will be playing there, a great band as well, but I want to learn a little bit about this Slam 59 Chevrolet. Talk to Kevin up to the side there, Kevin, and uh, spend a few minutes with them. There's a little guy in the truck with wood wagon, came originally two door, and he had a 56 Nomad Tram, one frame, built by Chassis out of Covina, California. All right, now while you said all that, we're going to roll up here a little bit, and I'm going to take a look at this thing. And what I'd like you to do is kind of pull over the side here. Okay, so there's a couple things to notice on this car. I mean, there's far more than a couple, but he did say 56 Chevy trim. So that's this piece right here, and then it points up in the front. And it's hard to tell from where you're sitting, but this is a two-tone blue. Blue, exactly. Two-tone two blue RM paint. We slanted the B-pillars. Basically, like I said, one-off frame, one-off rear end, loading disc brake system, one-off P-arms. Uh, front balances have been filled and stretched. Uh, rear balance has been one piece molded. Uh, ring gutter trim has been completely removed and shaved. What's under the hood? It, well, Kevin and uh, Dave have mentioned rides. They had a hard time guessing it. It was actually on the show a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's actually an LS3, but we dressed it up to make it look like a 409. I saw a W head, uh, valve cover, and lots of throttle bodies. We actually have Oppenhauser valve covers on it that are custom made, um, and we have a custom made full circle air cleaner. It makes it look like a 348. Very cool. Well, it's a killer, killer wagon. Thank you so much for bringing it out. Did you have a great show? Thank you. Oh, excellent show. Thank you very much for having us. You got it, man. Hold on. We're going to direct you back into traffic. Uh, we're gonna, we got a guy in a Lamborghini here who's kind of going crazy, but... Pay attention to Joe, he'll direct you out. Give it up for the killer wagon, man. That thing is just sweet. So I don't know if you knew this, Joe, but there's a competition going on. They call it the Optima Ultima Streetcar Challenge, and I think we have a couple of contenders here. Well, thanks for pointing that out, Kim. They might be the other 500 we just saw. That's right. Now, to our point earlier, I remember there was 40 cars. Yeah, were, the first one was like 25, I think. Well, it seemed well over 100. You know, you talk to guys like Kim, too. Uh, those guys are so ahead of the curve there, and he knew that that streetcar in the picture was going to be big. Proven right. That wagon I saw on the salt flats at Bonneville this year. That's a real deal. That is not just a show car. Well, you missed the uh, Back to the Future glory in the real line as well. Nice. A little, uh, what's that? That's 2000 on? Yeah. We got another crowd of people in that Jeep looking to go uh, overlanding. They're going to go across the street and set up their tent and camp out. At, uh, night. They'll be good. Bomb somebody keeps them on and make a fire, right? Doesn't that work? That's it. we got a great new Silverado truck with kind of a throwback mini truck paint job on it, Joe. This has kind of the mid-90s all over it, and it's back, and it looks great. I love it when they're taking some of the older cues, Kevin, and applying them to the newer vehicle. 
Heck yeah. See, this could be on Sport Truck 10 years ago. Yep, for sure. Well, I'm sure it's much better engineered. You know, the days of putting on an air coaster and a cat pack, it's not like that anymore. That's it. Trucks are true hot rods. There's another burgeoning aspect of the Power Sport segment, these side by side. We just got back from the Sandsport Super Show in Orange County, and that market is exploding. So if you're into your side by sides and UTVs and ATVs, that's a whole big thing going on, man. So, it sure is. Well, we're fortunate to have so much protected federal land that we can use to go off-roading and to go overlanding and enjoy these side-by-sides, off-road vehicles. Just make sure you leave it like you found it for the next guy. Yeah, and you know, that's the big thing. Uh, you know, places like Pisco, uh, places like uh, Acadia Wells, Borrego Springs, all those locations we take for granted. So, you know, at some point we're going to have to fight to keep doing that. So, we're just off-roading the chemistry point. Keep it clean support the legal end of it, as well as support our side of it, which is that there's no way they're taking that land back from us. No. We do it the right way, right? That's it, man. This looks like about a 69 Ford Ranger pickup truck. 69, it's beautiful. What I like about the, uh, this is a bump side, right? So uh, he's got kind of modern look with the brakes, wheels, suspension, but kept all the original trim, including that cool red, white, and blue Ranger badge on the back. Great looking truck, Joe. You don't have to do a lot of them. If you change the stance, you change the wheels, uh, keep it clean. Look at that rear bumper. Just nice. Plus they're short and sweet, Kev, you know? Not like those big extended cams with the long beds or yeah. the step sides. I've never got out of any of those. Keep them short, the front and the back. We built one of those in our shop a couple years ago. A 69 Ranger was black, but we put it on a 2002 Ford Lightning chassis with the supercharged motor. And that was one you could turn the key, drive it anywhere, make 450 of the wheels, but had that same look. It was really cool. Another uh, example is uh, General Mayhem with Roadkill. You know, when they took oh, yeah. the body on top of it, just, it makes just so much sense. I saw a really clean 340 industrial with the new uh, whole different underside chassis engine. It looked look OE. So, Joe, we've got a two door Bronco coming up that's uh, in a municipality colors. It looks like a red fire truck. Kind of a glimpse on what we're going to be seeing because I'm sure those Broncos are going to be put into civil service all around the country as they start hitting the streets. I love the fact they offer the manual, too. You know, Kevin, you see the manual transmissions and the new Chryslers and all the Camaros back with the six speeds oh, and oh, yeah. Broncos in the manual. It's back to. Shifting gear is true hot rodding, you know? For sure. Those are also theft deterrent devices for people who are not into cars. Yeah. They can't figure out how to drive them. It's so funny how many young kids have zero interest in shifting any gears. All you want to know about is how big the monitor is. I'll tell you what, once you do it, you're hooked. Oh, man. Check out the orange McLaren, Joe. Yeah, you know, we were in Texas for the Mile High Nationals, and it was McLaren and GTRs, and just amazing cars, and... I don't know, you could do much better than that look, Kevin. That's one clean ride. That's all of us. Someday, Kevin. Here comes a very cool Porsche. What are these? 24, Joe, 944. Oh, yeah. Another David Kimball cutaway I have. So another great uh, 70s GM compact. We've got a Vega here, which is a super uh -oh. cool car. This one is obviously not stock. But you know, there's something interesting about those cars. When they were built, they were delivered across the country to the dealers in a train standing vertically. They put them in a big rack and stood them vertically. So all those Vegas had oil systems and cooling systems that didn't leak when you stood them straight up. Interesting, Kevin. I remember Lee Lasky's Cosworth Vegas. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cosworth being the dual overhead cam four cylinder British motor, high performance. Certainly did. Uh, black with that gold, if I recall. Yeah, almost like a John Player special uh, black and gold paint theme. And I really didn't appreciate it at the time, you know, Kev? But now, it 
it's like seeing an old wagon wagon with the manual. It's like I'd scoop it right up. Well, because back then, big block Chevelles were still driving around on the street, and anything with a four-cylinder was uh, not yeah. cool. But that's all changed. Look at these guys in their C10. It's slammed. They've all got matching shirts on. It's a whole vacation in a truck. And it's an Alden American sponsored vehicle. Oh, our friends over at Alden America love those guys. Uh, where are they? Still Cal. Home of the Alden Eagle. This slams uh, truck market, Ken. We got to get into it. Definitely got to get back at it. I don't think I can afford one now, though. Everybody wants them. Just got to look harder. As I sit here and look at this Mustang too, Kevin, man, they look good. So many selections nowadays. So many cool new cars. Spice it up a little bit. Sometimes it's just wheels, exhaust, the wing, and maybe elimination of some stripes. Or, uh, or sometimes you take a brand new Bronco and put it on tank treads. Or you can do that. There you go. <laughs> You'll see it here. Yeah, we saw this outside. Once again, I want to thank our friends from Ford for Ford Out Front. You can check them out, hashtag Ford SEMA for more information. Our friends from Hot Rod Magazine, Motor Trend. Oh, Tucci. So, so this is my upstate connection. Not only was he here on display with his Ford Bronco, but he also had the Ford Maverick. We just uh, touched and talked to Dom, his son. I'm here with my man, Dave Tucci. Dave, you guys stole the SEMA show again, didn't you? Absolutely, I always do. He also took some time to talk to our young guns, which I appreciate. He inspired those guys. We're all talking about you afterwards, making us look good from upstate. Uh, you've been in enough of these shows, Dave. What was, what was your takeaway from this one? I think it was a good show. I mean, it was really, for everybody that came, I'm so glad everybody showed up. And I, we had a ball. We had one of our best shows yet. You know, I know you like to kind of hang around the board display up there on the upper level. And uh, there was a different vibe to it there. A lot of good action happening in Ford. The reception is always strong there. Um, good to see you, first of all. Good to see your lovely wife. Good to see your son. I don't know about these guys in the back. We'll have to talk about them. But uh, hey, for all you guys watching, upstate New York, Marcy and Unica, and did you bring any cannolis? We didn't. We missed out. Next year. All right, next year I'm getting cannolis. Tucci Hot Rods. There you go. Uh, check them out. One of the hottest builders in this industry. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Hey, here's kind of a neat trend. These guys, this Lamborghini, took a nod from the Jeep guys, and they're driving with the doors off. I love that. Yeah, we should make a song about that, kid. Driving with the doors off. Oh, we'll call Sammy Hagar. I think you got one. Yeah, Lotus. Sweet. Clean. Styling. I think I saw one over at uh, Giovanna Wheels. Those real guys got all the money, all those exotic cars. Heck yeah, man. How you doing? Kevin, I don't even know if I could drive one of those things, really. I, I would get in there, I wouldn't know what to do. But I'd find out pretty quick, I'll tell you that. For sure. Learn fast. I think the right pedal is still in there. All right, Kevin, this next truck here looks like it's about 30 feet tall. It's got a truck with a truck on top of it, on top of the truck. What, what do we got going on down there? Well, yeah, look at these. these uh, tag axle trucks here that have six wheel steering going on, Joe. This flat tread is crab walking sideways. Hey, Kip, do you mind pulling over the Meekum auction guy and interviewing him? Yeah, I'll get him. <laughs> this is a parade trick that not every truck can do, and that's uh, basically turn 45 degrees and still go in a straight line. I don't have the heart to tell the guy that his wheels are crooked, but you know, I hope he gets home safe. Look at this, independent everywhere. They got big ruthless forge. What size wheels are those? 26? And the axle. Poppy's garage. Poppy's garage out of Florida. Six wheel steering, six wheel drive. Lights. Had no kidding. Amazing, man. Yes. Creativity is just unreal, man. Oh, and then at the very end, he goes, you know what we're going to do? Then we're going to stick it side by side on top of it. Well, that's right. I think next year, the side by side is going to have six wheels. They'll be going sideways, too. Now there's lifted side by sides. They're going to call that the side by side winch. All right, Kev, look. Um, Kevin, I didn't have the heart to tell you, but I got you a little something for your birthday. And it's in this truck? It's in the truck. Hey, how's the show? It was awesome. I'm glad it's back in. And it was a great time. 
Where are you headed next with the Meekum Rig? Uh, well, our next auction is in Kansas City. So we're going to grab some good barbecue and get ready for the big one in January in Florida. Yeah, the big one being Kissimmee, Florida. Thank you. Uh, Joe, I think I'm, I'm going to the Kissimmee auction this year in Florida for a couple of reasons. One of them being the sale, the auction sale, of the Hero Hot Merc. Okay? So the Hero Hot Merc is one of the most famous custom cars ever built by George Barris back in 1952 for a guy named Bob Hero Hata. It's two tones green. If you saw the picture, you'd know the car. It's an icon and it's changing hands and this like never ever happens. And it's going to be at that Meekum auction. When is that, Kay? That's in January, the beginning of January in Kissimmee, Florida. The other one is the Pearson Brothers Coupe, which is a chopped Lake Bonneville inspired 32 that was also built back in the 50s. Another hot rod icon. Going to change hands there. So, you know, some of these events we work, like you and I here tonight hanging out, I'm just going to that one just to see because it's kind of history in the making watching that car sell. Yeah, I've, I've always felt that was more of a Meekum guy than like a Barry Jackson. I've, I've sold a couple cars through there, but uh, nice. Have a good time, Ken. Maybe I'll check you out down there. I got connections in Daytona. Well, yeah, we're going to need them because uh, Kelly's going to go fishing and she needs to know where to go. I've been waiting. I've been waiting. Ken, I'm getting the sense we're getting kind of close to the end of the cruise here. How many cars do you think we got? I don't know. Can you all have a this? Hold on. Keep coming here, folks. The cue ball says at least 50. All right. Well, we sure enjoy spending our afternoon and our evening with you guys. Once again, give yourselves a nice big round of applause. Thank you so much. We're still not done. There's plenty of action happening over there on the west side. Oh, yeah. Just getting started tonight. You know, Kevin, I may even wear new jeans tonight. Well, you know, every couple of weeks, we can change them out. A little late model heavy action. It's the SEMA cruise as we cruise into the night. It's Friday night. We're in Las Vegas. I want to give a big shout out to our friends and sponsors from Mothers, Mothers Wax and Polishes, and our friends from BASF. Oh, yeah. A little Godzilla going on here, buddy. Yep. Once again, see me by the numbers. Over 114,000 people joined us here this week. That was awesome. You know, and it's fun to see all the different companies that came out. Two great brands on that Dodge right there with Forge Line and Continental Tire. Continental's been everywhere supporting this industry, Kevin. Uh, yeah, big sponsors of uh, many of the Bonnier events in addition to being from there here at SEMA. Uh, huge advertisers and supporters of all things on the other things. How's our guys doing up there? They're running up on the uh, Arturo sponsor side by side. You may have seen there at the Sand Sport Super Show. All right. Look forward to seeing you guys over there at the uh, Scene Ignited. So, Joe, I know you're going to go to Ignited for a little while, but you're probably going to go home and take a nap for about a week and a half. What's uh, going to Ignited? What's your next automotive event, Joe? I'm going to Ignited, and then we're, uh, until we get kicked out of that, we'll go back to the room for a little doops and doops. Take a shower, go have a little doops and doops. Are you on the road again after, uh, after your break? And go out. Uh, hopefully have a chance to catch up with, uh, who knows, a few of you guys over there. Get a chance to say hi. If you're not sick of me by now, you can check out my podcast, Joe's Mini Bike Reunion Podcast. If you're into mini bikes, you can come to my show, Joe's Mini Bike Reunion. It's so cool. Um, check it out, Joe. Here comes the mystery machine. I wonder if uh, Scooby Doo's ride. Yeah, Velma. Shabby. What was the name? Shaggy. It was Shaggy. Yep. Voiced by Casey Kasem, by the way. Yes, that's true. Very good trivia. Who did Scooby? Wasn't me. Had a lot of fun in the show too. That's an example of some of the fun cars. 
Yes. Some awesome cars here tonight. Again, Kevin, how many people do you think you interviewed at the Seat Essential? 100? Uh, you know, I don't know if it was quite 100, but it, it, was, uh, it was quite a few. Some, some very cool people came by. You did a really good job. I was listening in. You had some of the big the man in black butsman up there. I sure did. I don't know if I saw you with uh, Chris Jacobs and some of the other power players. Well, you saw me with AJ. You saw me with Chip Foose. Of course, uh, some of the executive branch of the SEMA organization to find out what's happening in this industry and what's going on with the show. Yep, I saw the SEMA launch pad activities taking place up there as well. Yeah, we had the SEMA launch pad winner. And that was a really cool event, the launch pad. So it's kind of like Shark Tank, but for people that invent parts for cars or tools, automotive judges like Chip Foose and Miles Kovacs uh, help them Miles. Miles from Dub, uh, yeah. recently uh, nominated person of the year. For sure. How's everybody over here? Having a good time? Thank you for coming. Thanks for hanging in there with us. We can't forget our people over here. Thank you for hanging out with us tonight. Absolutely. What's your name, brother? Michael. Where are you from? LA. LA, me too. Where about? South Central right here. South Central. I head out down there, uh, watch the mini bike races down on Anna Street every weekend, right? You had a good time at the show? Yes, sir. You're in some trouble tonight. Blame it all on me, will you? All right. How you doing? Nice. Check out the, uh, the vintage square body done in a full modern style with the lift and the wheels and the lights, all the LEDs. Party in the back. Very cool. Well, Kevin, as I make my way around, I see a lot of our uh, local uh, police here in Las Vegas. want to thank you guys for doing an excellent job keeping us all safe here. For sure. Doing it with a smile. Uh, thank you so, so much for all you do. I really, really appreciate it. Yes, so much. Love these guys. Awesome job. Yeah. All right, Kevin. I hate to be the one to tell everybody, but it looks like we're getting to the end of this SEMA cruise. You think so? Yeah, we've got a few more cars that are coming through. There's always a straggler or two that still needs to get by, but uh, at this time, I'd like to take the opportunity to say thank you. Uh, once again, I'm your host, Joe Sepergano. I've been joined by my co-host, Kevin Osti. Uh, the 2021 SEMA Cruise has been a blast. We see some awesome vehicles. It's ended with Lori Monty, who works as hard as anybody at this show. On behalf of our sponsors from Mother's Polish, as well as BASF. We are here with you till 9, 10 o'clock over on the west side. Come over and say hi. I want to thank each and every one of you for being a part of this cruise. I love every one of each, and I want to see each and every one of you guys here next year, okay? Thank you all so much for coming. We appreciate it. And looking forward to seeing you all again right here next year at SEMA 22.